Good afternoon. Uh, anyone who has managed to stumble over here, this is a, a pleasant surprise. I'm so glad you could uh, you could see us. Um, hey, my name's Jackson. This is my first time uh, doing this kind of thing, uh, running a, a, a game on stream. We should have a good time. Um, I know I'm going to have a good time because I've got such a fine cast of players assembled in front of me. Uh, just briefly, we're playing uh, a D20 fantasy game similar to Dungeons and Dragons. It's called 13th Age. It's an ass kicking, high fantasy, action filled uh, adventure game. Um, so you're going to see a lot of the similar kind of D and D tropes. The rules going to be a lot, a little bit different to perhaps what you're used to, um, but we're going to have a good time anyway. So uh, as it happens, Art, why don't you tell us a little bit something about yourself? Hi, I'm Art. My pronouns are they and them. And today I will be playing a dark elf paladin uh, by the name of. <clears throat> My name harkens back story generations, and therefore shall not be sullied by the tongues of man or dwarf. You may call me Eric. Uh, and Eric's pronouns are he and Thank you. Uh, Daniel, who have we got hey. for you? Hey, yeah, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm he, him as well, and uh, as is my character, boringly. Um, uh, and I'm playing a halfling sorcerer by the name of Balthazar, Lord of the Eternal Flame, Master of the Darkened Sky, Prince of Destruction, Binder of Souls, Bringer of Death, the Hellbound Knight. And I think we're all going to have names just as ridiculous. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> well, let's find out. Let's hear from... You can, uh, you can do, Lord Balthazar is fine. Catchy. Let's hear from uh, David. Uh, g'day, I'm Dave, he, him, and I am playing Hector. I am a uh, working mercenary, soldier, or renter guard. I am uh, looking forward to the weekend, and uh, yeah, just here to have a great time. <laughs> uh, not quite as epic as the other characters, but there can't be too many of those, that's all right. And finally, Jamie. Uh, g'day, I'm Jamie, he, him, and I am Bullingschmott, dwarven wizard, master of the arcane, expert of the esoteric, and artist in all pursuits that are magical. These hands have wrought such things they would make the gods weep. He, him. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Um, we're here playing 13th Age. It's a game by Rob Heinz, who join us in Tweet. We're playing uh, a fantastic scenario called Swords Against the Dead, which is 13th Age's free RPG Day offering from 2016. So if you, if you watch along, I'm pretty sure you can still download this for free if you just search up 13th Age, Swords Against the Dead. We're uh, playing uh, on Astral Virtual Tabletop, which is going to handle all our dice rolls and, and have some cool little, cool little maps and tokens to fling, uh, fling around. Um, and we are listening, if you can still hear it, to uh, Sirenscape, which has uh, a super easy to use app for getting amazing sounds and music into your tabletop games. So let's talk a little bit about 13th Age, which is the game we're all playing. 13th Age uh, has uh, some very fancy bells and whistles that I want to talk about. The players today have got some pre-generated characters, but they've got some uh, spins that they've put on top of it. Uh, those are namely a one unique thing and some backgrounds and uh, some icon relationships and I, 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 would, I would amuse myself terribly to talk about what some of those means. So I'm going to go to the map screen right now. Well, hey, here we are in the Dragon Empire. Um, there it is. Dragon Empire is a, a classic kind of fantasy world uh, full of enormous kind of mythological figures called the Icons. They're not gods, they're just very powerful NPCs. They're the movers and shakers of the, uh, of the Dragon Empire. The Empire is kind of, kind of only at peace because they're all about just powerful to each other. And some of them know our player characters personally. And our player characters know some of them personally and a lot of the times uh, they're going to show up in uh, the, the, the characters stories um, to either help them usually help them or sometimes make things a little life a little bit a uh, little bit more uh, difficult for them um, so just briefly let me tell you a little bit about the uh, the icons there are 13 of them uh, there are they are the classic kind of fantasy archetypes that you'll recognize from stories and, and games the world over. That's why they work so well, because we kind of, we already know all about them. They are icons such as the Emperor, who runs the uh, runs the show in the Dragon Empire. He's uh, uh, arguably the most powerful icon, because he's got two other icons sworn to his service. We've got the Archmage, the most powerful wizard, who uses his magic to calm Midland Sea and keep the, uh, keep the monsters out. 
And uh, the Priestess is the Emperor's other icon in service, who is the representative of the Gods of Light, who lives in an enormous kind of multi-dimensional cathedral. Uh, the other uh, good guy icon, the heroic icon, is the Great Gold Wyrm, who is uh, the oldest metallic dragon in the world. He doesn't get out much these days. Uh, who does? Uh, but he has a good excuse. He's lying in front of the gates of hell, making sure the demons don't come out. Uh, he's kind of like an oversized scaly bath plug. Uh, those are the heroic icons, the icons that can be expected to do the right thing. We also have the ambiguous icons. They're not really good guys, not really bad guys. They do what's best for themselves, or they have a code that they follow no matter what. And they are icons such as the Elf Queen, Queen of the Elves, lived in a forest as you'd expect. Has a bit of an uneasy truce with the uh, with the, with the the Emperor, um, but that seems to be holding for now. Uh, another uh, ambiguous icon is the Dwarf King. Uh, King of the Dwarves lives under a mountain, as you'd expect. Uh, also has an uneasy truce with the uh, with the Emperor. Not a good guy, not a bad guy, does what's best for the Dwarves at the end of the day, as does the Elf Queen for the Elves. We have the High Druid, who is uh, the, the representative of the Wilds, I guess. She would like cities to kind of stop where they are, uh, and maybe let's get a little bit of nature back to uh, reclaim some of the empire. And interestingly, she's the Elf Queen's half-sister. And we have the Prince of Shadows, the greatest rogue in the world. So good, you can't even be sure that they really exist. They could be one person, could be several, could be an organization, could be a, a, a puff of smoke in the night. Uh, no one really knows, but they, they run the uh, the gangs out of Shadowport, and the Dwarf King has a 10 million gold bounty on on their head, and no one knows why. And then the other ambiguous icon uh, is the Crusader, uh, who is uh, kind of a, a paladin of the Dark Gods who want to rule the world, but the Dark Gods can't rule the world if the demons destroy it first, so he spends all of his time hunting demons, and if the enemy of my enemy is my friend, well then the Crusader is everyone's friend. But he's the kind of friend who'd burn your house down if there was a demon inside of it. Uh, and we also have the Diabolist. These are the villainous icons, the icons that are always up to no good. The Diabolist is the greatest demon summoner in the world. She really enjoys having uh, demons that are beck and call to wreak all sorts of havoc and destruction. Uh, we have the Orc Lord, who was uh, the most powerful orc. The orcs were banished to the north a long time ago, but one orc in particular has declared himself the most uh, powerful and smelly orc. Uh, he's called himself the Orc Lord, and he'd like to stomp in and, and take back the empire for himself. The Lich King was in fact an emperor in uh, an age past. He was known as the Wizard King, but he was a very cruel tyrant. The people rose up and deposed him, but being the Wizard King, he didn't stay dead for long. He came back as the Lich King, and he, uh, he's banished the Isle of Necropolis, where he lives, plotting to raise an undead army and take back his throne. We have, uh, finally, the three, the three most powerful uh, evil dragons in the world. And we have the red, the embodiment of rage and destruction, the blue, the mother of sorcery, and the black is the queen of assassins. And the Empire's solution to them is just give them a city and hope they stay there, so they rule over Drakenhall, the city of monsters. Uh, interestingly, the three were used to be the five, but the green is currently imprisoned by the Elf Queen, and the white was slain by the Lich King. So there we are. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means for player characters, but essentially the player characters know some of these icons and they might come up in their story. What else do uh, player characters have for themselves? They've got some backgrounds, which is a really cool kind of uh, skill list system, how 13th Age does that. We won't talk too much about that, but uh, you'll see how it plays once we get started. And they also have a one unique thing, which is very cool. We're going to hear about the player characters, uh, one unique things in a bit, but it's exactly what it sounds like. There is something unique about each of these player characters that sets them apart from every other being in the Dragon Empire. Um, and it can be anything as epic as when I die the 13th age will end to I'm the only human to win the Dwarven Drinking Championships and anything in between. As long as it tells a cool story, it's a one unique thing. And a lot of these these ideas, these uh, the, the icons and the uh, one unique things, I, 13th age does such a great job of encouraging you, even if you're not playing 13th age, to steal these ideas and put them into your own game. So, uh, briefly, I would love to hear about your characters that you've cooked up. Again, we'll start uh, start with Art and go uh, Daniel, David, Jamie. Um, so yes, give us a, a brief idea about what your character's about. I'd love to hear their one unique thing, and I'd love to hear what icons tend to factor into their story. Good, okay, so um, uh, Eric. <laughs> uh, one unique thing. Uh, is that he is the only holy knight dedicated to the service of the priestess. Um, he was originally 
an inquisitor for the crusader but when he was uh, sent as an emissary to santa cora which is the priestess's bastion um he found a liking to fighting evil on on her terms and uh, eventually took it upon himself to guard the sanctum of her temple and then become a full-blown paladin although he still does a lot of smiting um his icons if you couldn't tell from that are the priestess and the crusader um and pretty much everything i gave you was backgrounds too so hey that's outstanding uh, that's another thing i love about one unique things is they can they give the players agency to tell us something about about the world and how we want to run it there's another 13th age game going over on over there where the priestess has like an entire platoon of knights at her beck and call but because art has written down on the character sheet i am the only knight in service of the priestess well in our version of the of the, uh, of the dragon empire yeah you're the only uh, priestess knight next up who we got uh uh playing it's me. for daniel yeah hey uh so as discussed i am lord balthazar uh i'm a halfling i began my life simply on a, on a farm somewhere but uh an army of, of undead came and destroyed everything and i lived many years as a refugee um and then i made a dark pact with the diablerist and became a dark cultist um uh, however i realized that i was the one who deserved the power more than she and i deserved it better so i betrayed her and so I have two counts of negative relationship with the Diablerist. And because uh, I have a dark pact with demons, I also have two negative relationships with the Crusader because everyone hates me, but it's fine because I will be powerful enough. And uh, because uh, my one unique thing is that one day I will have the power to challenge the Diablerist. Whether I will win that challenge or not, we shall see. Ooh, I dig that. Excellent. A Diablerist in the making, perhaps. Uh, next up is uh, David. Uh, yeah, so Hector was previously a soldier in the Emperor's army, so I am loyal to him and I oppose the Lich. Not big fans of anyone who opposes the Emperor. Uh, currently I work as a renter guard, which is one of my uh, backgrounds. Also a father to my two lovely daughters, so my other background is good dad. And lastly, my one unique thing is I am the only person that is going to be hosting a party this upcoming Sunday. I'd love if you could make it. It's at 4 p.m. Please bring an appetizer. Uh, and you know I'm going to be captaining the shit out of that grill. So my final background is grill master for three points. Outstanding. Again, that is one thing with an enormous amount of agency in the world. We don't know how we know, but we know that the entire Dragon Empire, there is not going to be a single party being held from coast to coast at 4 p.m. except for the one uh, at Hector's, so you better be there. So I know you can make it, no excuses. <laughs> and finally, uh, Jamie, who are you playing? Ah, yes, well, Bullingschmott, one unique thing, just one. There are vast worlds of unique things about the mighty master of magic, but if I had to pick one, I am the, uh, well, suppose was depends how you want to call it at some stage in my life i was the legitimate descendant of the dwarf king and i renounced it all gave it all away to pursue the arts of magic so that is my one unique thing i was the former heir to the dwarf kingdom of forge uh but now uh, i pursue the study of arcanery which is why i have a plus one positive relationship with the Archmage and a conflicted relationship with the Dwarf King. My final uh, icon relationship is a negative point with the Lich King since in uh, an attempt to gain more arcane knowledge, I stole the Lich King's pet rat, Bones, and it is now my wizard familiar that I keep alongside with me. My backgrounds are in Scholar and in Socialite because I was very, very important back in Forge. That's about the end of me. Fantastic. Thank you, one and all. I can't wait to see what this uh, cast, colourful cast, gets up to. So, um, this adventure begins on the Sword Coast, which uh, looks up, up north across the uh, the Midland Sea in the, in the uh, middle of the Dragon Empire. 
Uh, it takes place on the King's Road, which stretches from uh, the holy city of Santa Cora in the east to uh, Horizon, the city of wizards in the west. Uh, you are traveling along that road for whatever reason you so desire. Perhaps you know each other, perhaps not. Um, and for whatever reason, you've, you've found yourselves uh, as night has fallen at the King's Rest, which is a small inn kind of out here in the middle of nowhere along the coast. There's no village as such nearby, but there are there are a few uh, farmers and, and homesteads dotted around. It's the kind of place where you feel like maybe a small village is going to spring up in the next 20 to 50 years or so, but right now they're just kind of frontier folk trying to eke out a living. Um, and that is that is what they're doing at the uh, at the um, at the fall of night. You, you, you've come here probably just after the harvest because I was originally hoping to turn this into a bit of a Halloween stream, but we missed it by a week. That's all right. Uh, it's it's been the uh, harvest. Everyone has uh, brought in their crops and they've gone to the inn on the same night that you have decided to rest there um, for a little bit of carousing. And so. Uh, the night has gone on, it's been a, a great night of jo joviality, uh, perhaps you've gotten to know some of the locals, um, perhaps uh, you've gotten to know each other, I don't know. But a uh, night has well and truly fallen and some of the farmers are thinking about heading home and some of you are thinking about heading upstairs to your rooms if you haven't already. Um, but I would love to hear more about what you think you've been up to as I go uh, to the map screen and uh, I'm going to show you exactly what this inn looks like, and I don't mind, you can uh, you can tell me oh, exactly hi. where you think your character would be. I'm just going to center that map slightly for the uh, viewers at home. Right, I'm going to be sitting in this chair in the corner, skulking to myself, and, 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 and watching everyone in my hood up, like, like in the corner, grumbling to myself and wondering why this place isn't bigger and has more room for me People to keep sit and drink up alone. To you. Very yeah, I know, I have to share have this. Quest. You, they think you have quests for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't have any fucking quests. <laughs> and I have to share this table with these two farmers who I absolutely hate. Uh, you're most welcome to uh, move your tokens around as you see fit. Uh, I've, I've thrown some NPCs all over the place, as you can see as well. But if you'd like to have the table to yourself, I don't mind. I can move them elsewhere. Yes, I'm, I, oh, can I, can I, actually, they... I think they should come and try to sit down, but I want to scowl at them in such a way that would chase them away from this table. Can I make a roll for that? You sure can, since uh, since we're keen to roll some dice, you absolutely may. Uh, I am keen to roll some 13th dice. Thirteenth Age has these same sound six characteristics that you'll recognize from uh, other fantasy games. Um, strength, con, dex, excuse me, uh, int, whiz, and charisma. Um, but instead of a big skill list like Intimidate or Persuade, which tells you what you're kind of good at, uh, characters have backgrounds that just tell us a little bit about where they've been, what kind of training they've had, what uh, what, what jobs they've held, uh, what skills they have picked up, and you can just interpret that as you will. So that sounds like a charisma roll to uh, scare these two farmers off. And, and now a... Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I have a background called Dark Cultist, which I suspect will help me intimidate people into not sitting next to me. W would you th would you think that applies? I would agree 100%. Once you've got a background in mind, all you have to do is convince the GM to uh, let you add it in, uh, which makes perfect sense. So that is a heck of a roll. I'm sorry you've wasted it on that. It looks like you're rolling. No, no, I, uh, no I, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad. In that case, can I have... Uh, I, I rolled really well. Can I have this table in the corner over here and all to myself, or is that too... Uh, you may. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's um, squeeze all I'll, these I'll be sitting over here. in the corner. These guys can... The, all these farmers can go join this table. Uh, they can... I, I'm, I, I am Lord Balthazar. I do not sit with peasants. Uh, I've just realized the folks know. at home can't see that roll, but that's okay. They'll see the next one. Uh, but it's an okay. excellent roll. It was a 27. It was, because in 13th Age, uh, not only do you add your ability modifier, you also add your levels to all your rolls. So you kind of get really powerful really quickly. Everyone here is level 4, so adding 4 to their rolls. It's amazing. Uh, yes, indeed. So, yes, I just fixed the chat so the rolls will show up now. So you would like this <laughs> this one in the corner. Um, so you've kind of scared this, uh, this family of farmers off to this table, and uh, this Good. couple is uh, going to have to stand awkwardly over here but that's okay there we are you've I've got, got a i've got a four top to myself <laughs> you've got a whole table to yourself and uh, i just got here early i sat down people are like hey are you using these chairs i'm like yes <laughs> no one's gonna bother you and again you can be upstairs in your rooms if you want to but let me hear where, where everyone else is 
Uh, well, oh, oh, after please, after you. Okay, uh, so Hector's working as a guard out the front, checking IDs, making sure no one's sneaking in for a cheeky bevy. Uh, after these people get scared off, I go over to the kids and I like, kneel down. I'm like, oh, you know, obviously that, that man over there is terrifying. Uh, uh, do you want to see some magic? I do a bit of like. They surely nod it slowly, yes. slowly nod, and then like look at each other and I nod a little bit faster. And I go, I'll go, look, mate, I'll get you some, like, some chicken tenders or whatever children eat. And uh, I would like to roll charisma and add my background of good dad and try to just, just, are you gonna, ease this are you gonna pull a chicken over. tender out of the ear? Yeah, yeah. Like, I already got a fight for you, boys. There you go. Uh, Outstanding. <laughs> so what is it? It's, add, uh, I click the add to next roll. Yeah, we're like playing that? on Astral uh, where the character sheet has, like, a built in background selector. To, uh, add that in so yes we click the uh, the blue circle that'll automatically add that in add that background into your next check and be sure to uncheck the blue circle when you're done uh 15 cool. that's that's not too bad you know the kids no, 27 you're not you're not fooling any disciples of the archmage but uh for kids yes they loudly <laughs> clap and enjoy the uh, chicken tenders pouring out of their ears <laughs> and their parents kind of give, give you a clap a... on the back <laughs> and i head back to a uh, gotta gotta watch the door i head back over here Excellent choice. All right, where's everyone else these days? Well, I think I'm uh, sitting in the middle table, right in the, the the thoroughfare. I've got books spread out on the table in front of me, um, as well as various arcane instruments that I've packed, and I'm conducting very important research, and how dare you interrupt me, but please stay so I can tell you how smart I am. And uh, I'm thoroughly explaining myself and trying to sound as intelligent as possible whenever anyone asks me why I'm here. I'll answer, my reasons are my own. How dare you imply I'm lost? <laughs> <laughs> Delightful. Uh, yeah, there is a, a noble uh, sitting there. And uh, at some stage she would uh, impugn to uh, introduce herself as, as Lady Dorset. Um, visiting from from Santa Cora, uh, and so there's kind of like a bit of a back and forth all night as you both passively aggressively try to take up more table space. Would you like to, Would you like to have a roll to see how much table space you manage to get for all your books? <laughs> I would love to. And I, can I please add my socialite background? I love considering that. that I'm very experienced in trying to get as much table space as possible. I know all the games. Of course you are. <laughs> all right. Okay, so 18. that's a. Uh... That's not bad, you know. Yeah, she's she's out here in the uh, in the wilds. Um, she didn't expect to uh, to have to uh, fight for table space. She's used to getting the <laughs> the center table at any inn she walks into. So uh, yes, you managed to take up half the table, and so she's had to like just end up on the other side talking to what who seems to be her her employer. Um, excellent, and uh, finally. Where would we find Eric if we were looking? Uh, would it would it break everything you've just set up if Eric were to arrive late? Not at all. Lovely. And then I would like to introduce Eric as a kind of ominous clanking sound in all of this, you know, very ornate but well used armor strides up to the door. Um, Anne's just going to walk straight in up to the bar unless he is waylaid at any well, point. I mean, approach the door. Is it closed helm? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop you. I, I do not look intimidating. I'm wearing uh, rented armor. I don't own my own. Uh, I'm allowed to have one piece of flair. So there's a sticker that says, kiss the cook. Uh, but um, as you come up, I'll put a hand out. I go, sorry, um, I am going to have to see the face before you come in, you're welcome to keep on your arms. I know there's goblins about. Uh, just need to get an ID on you, sorry. Take off the helmet in full and it's like, kind of, I I don't know what Dark Hells look like in 13th Age, so I'm just gonna riff. You should tell kind us. Kind of this like, pearlescent, purplish, black skin, white eyes, silvery hair. We're going like old school dandy. Um, so very unnerving looking individual. I, I doubt there's many dark elves that are this far south. Perhaps, yeah. Um, do this do? Uh, yes, no, no, not an issue. Thank you so much for acquiescing. You, uh, uh, head on inside. 
enjoy climb, the climb, enjoy the climb, evening. Climb, climb, just no, not even. Uh, straight up to the bar. Uh, right. Good evening. Do you have um, a liquor distilled from potatoes? What? Potatoes are for eating, frying, baking. You can't uh, you can't squeeze liquid out of a potato any more than you can squeeze blood out of a stoner. Well, I don't know how you do things up north, but here we got beer. Just gonna lean and like creak the bar a little bit and just be like, if you do not get liquid out of potatoes, you are not trying hard enough. Would you like to intimidate him? Yeah. Excellent. And given that uh, I would like to, um, I'd like to propose that given that I spent a bunch of time in the Inquisition, <laughs> I might be good at this. I think so. Add your Inquisition background to your charisma roll. Everyone's decided to make charisma rolls as they want to make make uh, make strong first impressions. That's great. I feel like that's what that's what charisma rolls are there for. Exactly right. <laughs> Twenty. That's, that's pretty 20. good. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Uh, the the innkeeper says. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, that, uh, that, that that seems reasonable, and uh, uh, scutters away uh, behind the, the into the storeroom, where you can hear the sound <laughs> of him change. rummaging through sacks and, and pulling out potatoes, and there's a faint. <laughs> <laughs> While he is distracted, is there anything stronger than beer? Uh, strong beer. Perfect. I will literally just like grab a tankard or something yeah, and then walk straight over to my scowling hooded companion's table and sit down. Uh, which table is that? You have a companion? Lord Balthazar, because it's the only place with free seats and yeah. I'm not really <laughs> intimidated. <laughs> and, I, and I try to scowl at you, but you just don't care. Like, right. <laughs> well, I think you scowl and I just look at you. Well, this, the uh, the scene is set, uh, so we're good. We begin the adventure proper, but there's one more thing that I forgot to do um, for 13th Age, which is to roll your icon relationship uh, points. Uh, but Art has really beat me to that, which is fantastic. So as I mentioned before, every now and then, depending on which points, uh, you, which icons you have points with, there's a chance they're going to show up in your story. Um, and how we do that is everyone is going to roll a d6 for each point they have. They've got multiple points with the same icon. They're going to roll the, the d6 multiple times. We don't really care if you roll a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4. We do care if you roll a 5 or a 6. If you roll a 6, it means, well, hey, that icon is going to be in your story tonight. And that's going to be helpful to you. Uh, if you have a positive relationship with that icon and you roll a six, maybe at some point you can say, well, I've got a level of introduction. So uh, with the with the Dwarf King, so this Dwarf Bouncer is going to let me into the bar, no problem. And I go, great, that works out really well for you. Um, but if you've got a five, it's still a story bonus, it's still an advantage for you, but it comes with a complication. In the case of uh, that example, maybe if you spend a five to go, ah, oh, here's a letter of introduction from the Dwarf King, let me in, please. Uh, then it'll be like, yeah, you can go into the bar, but hey, that Dwarf knew you from back at Forge, and he's got a grudge at you. He's, you, you your, your second cousin once insulted his father, um, so he's going to try to uh, try to get back at you. That's what a five's about. Um, yeah, so fives and sixes is what we're watching out for. Um, Art, you've already rolled. Daniel, do you want to have a roll? Roll each yeah, of yeah. your icon. Uh, do we just hit the? Do we just hit the the button? Exactly what, right. Uh, hit the action in your sheet, and uh, you got a bit of a special case. Balthazar is particularly uh, is a sorcerer with demonic ancestry, Ooh. which means he has an extra bonus relationship point with the diabolist. So far, so good. Fantastic. Oh. That's incredible. <laughs> that is... A six and two fives. All right. Um, you can spend all those three points for story bonuses at some point in the adventure, or if you want me to take off one of your one of those off your hands right now, I can make that easier for you. Uh, a common way to cash in icon relationships points is say, ah, oh, well, because I know this icon, I've found a magic item at some point. So would you like to chat, cash in one of those sixes or fives for a magic item? Can I tempt you? Oh, what have you, what have you got to tempt me with? What have I got? Um, well, I've got a... Uh, and I'll cash in a five, I think, right? Like, if it's worth the same, Absolutely. Right? But you'll get a magic item with a complication, right? Exactly right, yeah. I'm going to give what? you, uh, for your five, it's a jagged sword that you, you, you took off a Diabolus cultist many, many uh, years ago. Actually, sorry, were you... Uh, 
You're the sorcerer. You got. Not I'm much. a sorcerer. I, I mean, not I'll much take use a of the sword. sword. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. No, no, it's a jagged ah! wand. I misspoke. It's a jagged wand which you uh, 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 took off the uh, the uh, uh, the body of a diabolist cultist. It's got some yeah. spikes in it that seem to like do a better job of uh, uh, channeling magical enemies. So it's a plus one weapon, which means it gives you uh, uh, a plus one to all your attacks and damage. That's fantastic. Plus, it doubles your miss damage. Anytime you miss, sometimes in the 13th age when you miss, you deal a little bit of miss damage. It's going to double all your miss damage. Um, but because you're spending a five, maybe like if you if you if if you uh, if you oh, what would it be? It doubles your miss damage, but you take a quarter of it. You're going to take a quarter of the miss damage as well. Something like that. Um, how about? Yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Done. Sold. Done. Deal. Sold. Excellent. Uh, once you've opened up your 13th age character sheet there, go to the bottom right corner, and where it says uh, spell bonus for your magic items, put a 1 in there, and it's going to automatically add 1 to all your attack and damage. Oh, excellent. Where are we here? Sorry, say that again for me. Uh, where... Bottom right corner, you should have your magic item uh, bonuses. Ah, oh, I see. And where yep, it says yep. spell, you're going to get a, uh, add a 1 to that. Uh, change that oh, zero excellent. To one. Thank you, Jackson. My pleasure. Perfect. Done. As always. All right. Uh, and I'll remember the rest. Yeah, uh, uh, David, would you care to roll your Rakan relationship points there? Heck yes. Uh, so I have two ties to the Emperor that are... Okay, that's good. Excellent. And be sure to and check those off the character sheet. Fantastic. So for some reason, uh, knowing the Emperor is going to help you out tonight. Would you like to cash that in for a magic item, or would you want to keep it for uh, I don't, story? but I'll say to anyone who's interested, there, there might be a surprise guest at a certain event coming <laughs> <up> soon. <laughs> All the, right. emperor. <laughs> the, the emperor the emperor is coming to you as a clown like he's gonna turn up and he pulls the hat off and go, oh my god that's the like the, that's the leader of our nation amazing yep if you haven't spent your icon it's relationship fuzzy. by the end of uh today which oh. is a thursday <laughs> which is thursday night the emperor will be there on sunday uh and finally uh, 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 uh jamie you your, yes uh, your of points? course all right let's start with the good let's go to the bad Oof. Ooh. And what about the ugly? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yes, Icon 3. No one likes that guy. Oh, yes. Uh, the classic Icon 3. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's that fine. Is, that is the Dwarf King. That's all good. Okay. All right. Dwarf King is not in your story tonight, but that's okay. Um, the uh, Lich King uh, is a 6, and the Archmage is a 5. Be sure to note those down. I won't offer you a magic item, because I, I know that you like using them as story bonuses, don't you? I, I do like using them as story bonuses. All right. And uh, Vetus to the Punch and already rolled their relationships. What did you roll again? Uh, my two positive relationships with the priestess, Netta to me, are nothing. Um, <laughs> but my conflicted relationship with the Crusader, Netta to me, an advantage. Ooh, the Crusader is going to help you out tonight for some mm -hmm. reason. All right. Um, just quickly, uh, as I try to remember everyone's names, uh, Hector, I'm going to give you a little, little, little bit of a freebie for your relationship with the Emperor. Hmm. Uh, the Emperor got your invitation uh, and, and, and sent a message back um, and it was a missive from, from the, the, I guess, whatever the equivalent of the police force would be, uh, the, the Imperial Imperial Guard, the Purple Dragon Knights, um, and hmm. it said something along the lines of the Emperor has considered your invitation and uh, uh, appreciates it. Um, as it happens, there have been reports of some suspicious activity in the area, so we don't think it's really appropriate for the Emperor to come out. Um, unless, you know... Look, there's a fugitive called... Uh, there's a fugitive dwarf named Digger who's been spotted in the area, and we just don't feel safe with him coming out. Uh, so, sorry. And my read on that is, of course, were I to subdue the fugitive, <laughs> the Emperor would be free to attend because I know full well his books are clear on something. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and he would probably be a great gift yeah. for my young daughter turning six. <laughs> so that was a little a little, uh, little, little, bonus for you there. Um, Tremendous. It, it was written much better and much more official saying than how I just ad-libbed it there. Um, but here we are. The adventure begins, and literally the first page of the scenario reads... You're all in an inn. Roll for initiative. Oh shit! <laughs> Which you should. I was do wondering why we had a. I was wondering why we had an inn-based um, uh, map. <laughs> I was like, why would? We... I thought it was just efficient. Uh, initiative, 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 initiative. On the right. Seven. Found it. One. 
Well, and I get advantage on this or something, right? Yeah, I that is twice. that is automatically built into the uh, roll. So you can see oh, in there you rolled a two a and a fifteen. 15. Hot dog! I love being a fighter. Uh, just quickly, what is your uh, daughter's name? Because I have a, an NPC here ready to go, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give her to you. Uh, Anna Moranamore is what I wrote <laughs> down from what we were discussing earlier. Uh, Anna is fine. Anna is a family fine. name. Excellent. Hey Jackson, my character still has his original name on the on the rolling thing. Do I am you know, outraged. Do, what do you mean? Where do I fix that? On the rolling thing in the chat? Do you mean? On the chat. The sorry. Le it looks record. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's just wizard. It looks good to me. Maybe hit refresh. As long as it's oh, coming, maybe hit not incorrect. Yeah. That's my bad. That, yeah, I, I probably oh, just good. Hit it looks correct to me. Let me see if it looks correct on the on the overlay on the on the stream view. Yeah, I think we're all good. Yeah, oh, good. So my daughter's now here as a hostage. Is the <laughs> result of. <laughs> it, it well, I mean, you couldn't get anyone to watch it because the entire kind of surrounding villages, uh, not villages, uh, farms and homesteads are here celebrating the harvest. So there was just no way to. Uh, leave but your her daughter's her here. <laughs> no, no, it's because it's her birthday. So my wife's at home setting up the decorations, and she can't see any of them. There's presents everywhere. And she just gets too excited to start opening things. So she's gonna be coming with me on work for the time being. Excellent. And what a birthday it will turn out to be as I roll initiative for someone else. <laughs> uh oh <laughs> oh my goodness with a 23 none of you uh saw it coming when hey hey hey, hey, hey. yeah my initiative is 23 oh so it is um i rolled a 19 <laughs> i can reveal to you that uh in 13th age uh monsters win ties for Damn. reasons that i'll explain later on but all of you are shocked when the window behind that, the bar bursts open you may have everyone may have already been spoiled by this by the blurb at the start of the stream uh when the window bursts open and skeletal bony hands reach forward and grab oh, no. at the uh at the barmaid not only that but there is a uh, echoing all around the uh inn as and i shouldn't have uh, uh hidden them all i've got to hide unhide them all one by one stand by here they come any moment oh now. Oh me, my. Mooks, 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 mooks. There they all are. As oh, a skeletal of... bony hands burst through <laughs> windows. Uh, uh, Hector, were you inside or outside? I was outside. You I was outside. I was watching the door. All right. Well, you're taken by surprise as out of the dark, misty fog, uh, skeletal hands lurch toward you, and uh, they're all going to have a turn. Let me have a look here. Oh, uh, I've no. got three can burst in and uh, attack Lord Balthazar. Who is right here on the edge? So here come three attacks on you. Here come their bony claws. Oh, fuck. Uh, they're gonna roll three attacks. What is your why, ace? Why am I alone? <laughs> uh, sorry. Because you're right in the corner. What is your AC there, uh, Balthazar? Uh, my armor class is 19. 19. Thank you very much. Um, two of them miss you. One of them hits you for six damage. All right. Uh, and did I... they all roll I'll, six? I'll or take do it. they have the same damage? Uh, they have like static flat damage. damage flat. Yeah, they didn't age. Uh, has the philosophy that players like rolling dice, but GMs don't because yeah. they have enough to yeah. do. So they I generally totally have static that. damage. I like it. Um, fantastic. All right, you hear a cry of alarm and the thud of a potato being thrown across the room <laughs> as uh, two skeletons burst in the side door and uh, you hear the barkeeper uh, uh, struggling with them. Uh, two skeletons climb through here, as I mentioned, one grabbing at the barmaid, one stumbling toward this halfling farmer in the corner, uh, and uh, two uh, jumping in here, uh, getting a little bit close to Anna, but they see this farmer um, who, you know what, since you decided to make a local, I can tell you all of their names, because they do all have names. Uh, they're going to grab Klaus the farmer here uh, and begin Klaus. him. <laughs> Uh, Bulling Schmott probably already knows this, uh, that Klaus uh, runs the farm that Lady Dorset owns out here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this is really going to put a dampener on your uh, your party on Sunday. Yeah, he was Klaus dies. <laughs> and Klaus is fucking... You love Klaus He looks party. like I've got three... Oh, he, he makes the best hummus. I've got... <laughs> You better bring that. I've got three skeleton wings lurch lurching out of the fog, uh, going straight for the doorman. Uh, so three attacks. I'm going to have to say some ID. Three oh. attacks on Hector. <laughs> uh, it was in their other pants. Sorry. Uh, what is Hector's AC? My AC is 21. 21 is... Uh, I also have a couple of bits and bobs for taking damage. So. Uh, all right. Well, one of them is here with a 22. and is going to take. Uh, going to do six damage to you, unless you got anything to say to that. 
Yeah, I'll, I have a talent called Heavy Warrior. What does that do for you? When something exceeds my AC, I can take half damage. So I'll only take the three. You'll only take just. three. That's all good. I have a, a very handy interface here for, for managing HP, so I will handle everyone's HP I'll from leave it in here on out. You, will it show up if they get a critical? Uh, it will. Lovely. Because that matters. <laughs> Absolutely. And a lot of uh, 13th Age powers also matter whether you roll an even or an odd roll on your natural die roll. Not after you've added, added, the, added the bonus, but on the natural die, which is really easy when you're playing at the table, you just look at it. Uh, so in natural, all you got to do is hover over your roll and it's going to tell you what the natural result was. Uh, it's not going to do for those skeletal attacks because only I can see them. All <laughs> right. So, skeleton Luke's on uh, uh, 23. Uh, next up, we had, uh, I believe, Eric also on 23. What do you do? I would like to put my helmet back on. <laughs> then I would like to smite evil. <laughs> they are certainly evil. Have a go. Okay. Uh, I believe I have this as just a quick action, so I'm just going to boop the button and see what happens. <gasps> 20 versus AC is plenty. Uh, which one did you go for? One of the ones surrounding Lord Balthazar? Uh, is that right? Is, there's none attacking children, no? Uh, not immediately, it seems, no. Then the closest to me would be the Balthazar Angry Man, so I will hit the ones around the Angry Man. Excellent. 20 is enough to hit. What's the damage there? 30. 30 damage is outstanding because uh, these things are mooks, which is uh, a neat little 13th age mechanic. They've got a big shared pool of hit points. They don't have individual hit points. And as soon as you deal enough damage, the hit points kind of flow through them into the next one, which means uh, you deal uh, three, you essentially deal three points of damage to uh, skeletal mook number six uh, because skeletal mook numbers, uh, what are they, four and five? Yeah, four and five go kaput. How did they die? How did you manage to kill two of them with one uh, smiting? That's what I want to know. Uh, giant... Hang on, what? I'm assuming I have some kind of great sword. I don't actually he know. Got them sword. Does it? It says... Oh, yes. No, I have great sword. So just literally, like, both hands out and, like, swing through all three of them at once. Um, probably maybe saying, eh, duck, uh, as yeah. I swing <laughs> over the top of angry man um and they and, do not duck <laughs> and the last one like gets sort of like breaks off part of rib cage um and just like quick sword back up ready to defend or hit again depending on how i'm feeling excellent in a shower of bones uh the skeletals skeletals uh no more yeah, excellent. I should have mentioned, on your turn, 13th age, you always have a standard action, which you're usually going to use to attack. You also have a quick action, which you can use when it's something on your character sheet says, as a quick action, ma -ma 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 -ma. Um, and you also have a move, which you can move to uh, somewhere nearby you can see. There's no distances in 13th age, it's just kind of, if you're, if you're far away from something, use a move to get nearby it. If you're nearby something, use a move to get in space. Hit me. I already did. Uh, once per battle, <laughs> When you hit a foe, mm -hmm. you can deal 20 ongoing damage to that enemy. Does a mook count as a singular or, a, or an yeah. entity? I don't think you can get ongoing damage on that. I think it's non-mooks. Cool. In that case, never mind. I have an excellent question. Uh, it's cool. Would you like to move or should we go to Lord Balthazar? Do I look like I'm worried about these things? No, I do not. You got nowhere to be. Balthazar, there's a mighty swing. You duck just in time for skeletons to be smashed to pieces behind you. What do you do? Uh, all right, firstly, uh, I would like to move. I assume I'm, in I'm engaged, is that the term? You're about to be engaged by the two at your back, but they are no more. You're not engaged with number six right now, I well, would say. He already attacked me, so I feel like he is Oh, he already attacked you. Yeah, you're right. You, you are absolutely right. You uh, were so attacked, so you are I would engaged. like to take a move to move nearby. And I'll, and I'll move over here. All right. Here's the thing about uh, moving when they're engaged with you. You have to disengage first. What the heck does that mean? you got two choices when you're engaged with someone and you want to get away. Uh, option one, you can just run away and take an attack of opportunity. And that's totally fine. If you've got, some, if you've got somewhere to be, you can just say, ah, I'll... Oh, just mute myself. Oh. Uh, you can just say, <laughs> Oh, uh, good. I thought my audio crap. <laughs> you can just say, ah, oh, i got somewhere to be. Hit, hit me with opportunity attack. Option two is you can attempt to disengage, which is part of your move action. It's kind of like free. 
Uh, disengage means you roll a d20 and you're looking to roll an 11 or better. If you succeed, well, hey, you get away with no problems at all, no opportunity to attack, you're fine. If you fail to disengage, it means you're stuck where you are, you cannot move, you lose your move for this turn. So it's kind of a risk reward thing. But having explained all of that, I believe that you have a sorcerer talent called Spellfist. Is that right? Oh, Spell fist. Use, I, um, yeah, I do. You can use ranged uh, can... spells in melee without drawing opportunity attacks if you so desire. So that may have uh, may change your mind. Um, yep. Um, you I'll, I'll, I'll make a diseng I'll make a disengage check. Fantastic. Go ahead. Uh, disengage in the top right corner. A four. Yep. You are stuck where yep. you are and you lose Wah -wah. your move this turn, but you can still spell fist them in the face. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm gonna disappoint everyone by charging. I will, I'm, I'm using, I will spend a standard action to gather power. And I will be like... When you I gather power, I think this is... Yeah, yeah, this is actually not on your sheet uh, because it was enough room. Hit that gather power action because not only are you going to do double damage on your next turn, you also get a chaotic benefit. So go ahead and Ooh. hit that gather power button and let's see what you get. That's news to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, thought it doubled my damage in which case... I'll yeah, it's a great deal. Uh, double damage on next standard action spell plus chaotic benefit number two is you deal four damage to anyone who is staggered and nearby to you. And the, Currently? Uh, yeah, I believe though that's probably non mooks so... I have, I, have, oh, okay. I have upsold that terribly, and you get nothing. That's all right. Um, but yes, whenever you get a power, you get a chaotic benefit. Uh, one of those. Cool. All right, so that was Balthazar. We go to Hector, who has to earn his keep. Hell yeah. Uh, I, I parry a couple blows, and then uh, I yell inside, and I go, Anna, sweetie, grab the other two kids and head downstairs. <laughs> uh, I see there's a cellar there, so they'll go and take cover. And I kick the door closed uh -oh. so the skeletons can't get past. I pull my big old axe, and I'm... Bonk them. Uh, so I'll make an attack against Skeletal 7, let's say. Go for it. They're asking for it. Ka chow <laughs> How does that go for you? Uh, that's a that's a, that's a a 10, 10, which I suspect is not going to do it. 10 is not going to do it, I'm sorry to say. Unbelievable. Um, but you still get a little bit of a consolation prize for damage. I also get a bunch of... Hang on, I need to see my thing. So on an even, on an even miss, first I gain three temporary hit points. Nice. Then I also the, the escalation die isn't in play, so that's it. Ooh. I deal uh, four damage. Uh, four miss damage, and you get three temporary hit points, and that's kind of your cool little uh, fighter thing. What's that called? Uh, it's called steady now. Steady now. Excellent. <laughs> so as the guy's like, ah, steady now. No, get up. <laughs> All right, four damage for him. And you're saying where you are? I imagine you can hold the uh, hold the door. Yeah, this seems like a good point. Can I be positioned so they can't get past me easily? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, You You have got their attention. Yeah. No doubt about that. All right. Um, let's go to Bulling Schmott, last but not least. Has oh, realized that something is amiss. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I cry out and I uh, protect me. I'm very important. And I will uh, seize out a, a cup of one of the bubbling arcane assortments that I have on the table in front of me and fling it out. And uh, as the liquid leaves, it materializes into crackling magical bolts, which will strike uh, the two um, skeletons that are currently engaged with the fantastic Hummus Maker, whose name I have forgotten. Uh, Klaus. 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 Um, actually, what I'm going to do is you I'm going to see it behind the skeleton. <laughs> it's covered by it. <laughs> Much like um, Klaus himself. <laughs> <laughs> Covered in skeletons. Um, actually, what ha what I'm going to do mechanically is I use my magic missile ability, which automatically hits, so I don't have ah. to do nothing. Um, and I will be targeting uh, skeleton mo Skeletal Mook 11. Um, so I deal 3d8 damage to Skeletal Mook 11, so I'm just going to hit my magic Oof. missile attack. Outstanding. All Ooh, right, there we go. Wow. Not great. Yikes. Um, so apply each die to the same target or two different targets. So right. I'm going to all, all hit the same target. All right. Uh, not that it matters because these are mooks. They're kind of all sharing their hit points. Of um, course. That's all good. But you did not do enough damage to knock one out, I'm, I'm afraid. You know whose fault this is? Th this is just typical of the other noble that I was discussing talking with all time. <laughs> oh, so I'm going to shoot her a withering stare. I cannot And then mass. for my action, I will move over here and stand in between Anna and Skeletal Mook 12. This oh. is out of no oh. sense of heroics. I'm assuming I am the other child that is going to be led into the basement. And I will hold out <laughs> my hand patiently. <laughs> Outstanding. All right. Uh, I can't maths. Uh, you, Save me. I was one hit point off. You did, in fact, blast that one book to smithereens, uh, which is good news. 
Yes. So one of them bursts and you move in to protect uh, Anna from the other. I move in to be protected by Anna. (laughs) All right. She gives you a funny look and she just says, you smell weird. Uh, and <laughs> runs off. <laughs> that's such a. That's such a. That is like a perfect six-year-old. <laughs> uh, she grabs and uh, again, I'm like uh, slowly giving these people their proper names. Uh, grabs Jojo and Graham, the two kids, uh, and runs off down the cellar. And they are sweet children, hidden. lovely children. They're, they're what about me? Kids. What about the under? What about the defenseless? <laughs> you're short, but you're not. Wait, you child? Okay. I need tiny child wizard. Excellent. By dwarf standards, I'm hardly 96. <laughs> All right. Uh, so no one has moved to save uh, either the barmaid, whose name is Clara, or the innkeeper, whose name is Horst, uh, and uh, nor the halfling farmer, whose name is William. Um, you all had your hands full, I guess. So here they come. Uh, they all take one more step toward death as bony claws kind of rake at their at their oh, at no. their flesh. I like that Jackson gave them all names for us, so, so we feel <laughs> bad when they die. Absolutely, I mean, it works. Well, I wasn't going to use them until <laughs> when uh, Farmer One dies. We go. There's going to be little Klaus dies, at my event know. with empty chairs. Wait, hold on a second. They're already like unconscious. Uh, they probably are unconscious. They they are uh, they are literally like uh, NPCs with. Um, uh, very, uh, they don't even have hit point bars. They're kind of going to take two hits and they're going down. So they are already seriously injured and in trouble just from a single slice because uh, I can't believe rolling the dice. Um, but I still do have some attacks for you. Uh, I've got skeletal mook number six on uh, on Balthazar, who is going to roll. Yeah, good luck. Uh, My AC is amazing as a sorcerer. We uh, try nerds. 18, which is just a miss for you. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm a sorcerer. <laughs> you can get around me. And three attacks on uh, Hector with an AC of 21. Uh, two of them hit you. So another 12 damage coming your way. I have another. I can once a day. I can use my ability twice. I will use it again. Really? Uh, and reduce one of those. Yeah. It's there to be used. Reduce <laughs> it by half? Those two. Yep. Are you worried that about anything bigger coming along later in the adventure that might be able nah, to deal more I can than still, six I can damage? still use it. It'll only be once a battle, right? You're not wrong. It's true. Yeah, use it. If you got them, burn them. All right, <laughs> excellent. Now we go back to Eric at the uh, at the at the top of round two, and this is where things get interesting because we bring out the escalation die, which is an enormous D six that sits on your table in all your thirteenth age games. Um, I have a virtual D six, of course, but essentially thirteenth age heroes are pretty mighty. As soon as they get into a fight, their their adrenaline starts pumping. They start getting into it. They realize what's at stake. They add one to all of their attacks this round. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the stream. Not quite. Uh, you're going to add one to all of your attacks this round and you're going to add two next round and three next round and so on as the fight gets a little bit more hectic and you get better and more on edge. So uh, with that in mind, uh, let's go back to Eric. Right. Um, am I nearby? Um, am I within move distance of the ones near horse? The ones near horse? Oh, Horst, yes. Um, yeah, oh, it's a little bit tricky. Um, I'm going to need like some kind of athletics roll just because there is the chaos has erupted. Uh, people are starting to jump up and scream and run everywhere. There are tables being, uh, chairs and tables being scattered, and you're going to have to leap over that bar to get to Horst because he's kind of around the corner uh, in this little storeroom. Um, so it's going to be a feat of athleticism, I think, to make it over there you know, with one single move. Ring. Athleticism or Derek athleticism? Uh, you tell me a story. I mean, I prefer strength. I, just... I think so. If you're like throwing tables out of the way and kicking the yeah. bar, kicking a massive hole I through think, the bar to strike through. Eric's path forward is juggernaut. He just goes. Absolutely. And moves, and that is how things have been. Um, and do you have a background to help with that? Uh, look, I was gonna argue Sanctum Guardian. I am used to fighting things in like awkward places where I'm trying not to destroy fancy furniture, so. That sounds perfect. <laughs> add, add that background to your role. Do you want a strength? Uh, yes, yeah, strength is just fine. 29. Oh my goodness. I think you take out the entire bar, like the entire five foot section of the bar is just gone, flattened through as you burst through and you can confidently stride all the way over to uh, where Horst has hidden just behind, uh, having 
run out of potatoes to throw at the skeletons. What do you do? Would like to hit skeleton. Excellent choice. Roll it up. Twenty-three. Twenty-three is fantastic. Hit that uh, delayed roll to roll your damage. Oh my goodness! Twenty-one is enough to take out two skeletons again. Tell me how that happens. Same thing, just swing. Um, I will say there is a difference though, because this didn't use smite. So the previous attack, where there was a very ge like gentle, uh, angelic sound of ah, as he swung, doesn't happen this time. It's just bones crunching. Fantastic. All right, no blast of light. Horst is saved, uh, but uh, Akara is, is still paddling with the uh, with the skeleton behind her. But that's fine. One thing at a time. Got any quick actions for us, or is that you? Uh, look, my quick actions to save people are like once or twice a day, so no. Very good, <laughs> Balthazar. Oh, I'm afraid we've lost you, Balthazar. I've been charging my electricity this whole time in like a little ball, and then suddenly like it crunches, disappears, I just pull out my one, I tap the guy in front of me, and it, bl <laughs> it blows out of me in a huge force of lightning, and I use a uh, lightning fork. Lightning fork, here it comes. Right. It's right. a natural one. Okay, however, I have once per battle rerolled this attack roll with this spell. So I can tick this that. This may be the time to use it, yes. Yep, so I'm just going to click the whole thing again. Exactly right. And re-roll Lightning Fork. Lightning Fork! Oh, that's not great! That's not 14. great. Let me see what Against is physical defense. their PD. They've been in the ground. It's just enough to hit them. Actually, 14 is, is not enough. 14 is not enough, but so 15, I deal half damage. But 15 is, because you're adding one oh, from your Escalation it, die. Does it, is it... Oh, is it really? It is. So that's a hit? It's a hit. <laughs> okay. And because I gathered power, I deal double damage. So I deal two times, uh, two times 76. Um, well, don't roll that just yet because you've rolled an even roll, which means you can target another creature with another attack. So I can make two attacks. You can make another attack as long as you target someone else. Actually, no, well, no, I am wrong. Roll the damage first. We'll blow yeah, some up. And then the lightning is going to arc to another target if any are still standing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I roll my hit down. Roll your hit. hit. Thing. So 28. 28. Quick math. Which is to... doubled to 40, 56. 56. Oh, my goodness. So 56 damage as the lightning arcs from what one the to the next to the next to the next to the next. And then I, and then I get to attack again, yeah? Because I roll an 56 even. is stunning. It's exactly what you need. That's a big goddamn number. To kill all of them? <laughs> to kill I was charging. <laughs> one, two, three, four, and one of them outside. There are still two outside uh, fighting uh, Hector, but uh, you can certainly have a go and see if you can finish those off as well. Yep, so... Jeez yeah, you're right. Louise. So, lightning damage get, lightning fork again. 19. It's a 19. Well, 20. Which, which means right. it won't though. arc. But... Does this also max at double damage? I, only the first I, I don't one. know. Only the, the, uh, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, charging power when only you... happens to your first first roll. There you go. Okay, so this one will only deal 25 lightning Which is damage. enough to take them down. How do they die? So in my mind, in my mind, what he's been doing is sitting in the corner charging, and then at the last second he just clicks, and they, he taps, taps that one, and the lightning arcs around for every single one. And then and as they all collapse, he just sits down back at the table and flicks up his collar. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> It's like it's it is like the uh, like the, the the kind of kung fu movie action hero uh, stereotype of the quiet guy in the corner does nothing for the entire fight until he finishes <laughs> yes. it and then sits back down. All right, there is an enormous kind of arcing and there's a smell of burnt dirt in the air um, as the uh, as the the lightning shutters around. I just realized I didn't change the music at all. We were accompanied by. Delightful little, uh, delightful little carousing in the background. <laughs> People in the corner still, still drinking. Still a that, uh, that's a failing on my part, and it does a disservice to Sirenscape, which is a very cool app to uh, uh, handle all of your music and sound effects. Let me get some um, creeping fog music all up in here. As night settles back down in the uh, in the King's Rest Inn, 
anyone who was uh, near a window, and indeed Hector, can look out over the coast, over the marsh, peering through the uh, only faintly beams of moonlight barely making their way through the fog and see more shapes stalking out in the distance. Doesn't, they don't seem to be making a, making a beeline for the inn, they seem to be wandering at random, and it must be relatively recent, otherwise Eric would have seen them on the road. But more and more you can see these shapes stalking out, shambling figures in, among, in amongst the fog. Um, and you realise the King's Rest Inn is about to be somewhat surrounded, and perhaps there are too many for you to face. Uh, I'll, I'll open the door and step back inside. And I'll address the room saying, ladies and gentlemen, uh, unfortunately, it looks like today's, uh, this evening's frivolities come to a close. There is another undead attack impending, so I oh. would suggest that you gather your belongings and either head home if you are close or otherwise seek shelter in the Ooh. cellar below. You do, in fact, have some information at hand as I finally find the creeping fog music. There we are. I, I hold up no. my, my empty gl uh, mug and I go, thirsty, barmaid. <laughs> Thirsty. I'm gonna make my way back towards uh, the table, like fanning myself, clearly distressed, clearly terrified. And as I lean on the table for support, I'll move my uh, book a good arm's length into the other noble woman's face, just making very clear that I've earned some more. <laughs> Excellent. Here are some things that you might know about the surrounding area as I will take you. People in chat, I'm 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 always uh, keen to hear since this is my last turn, uh, like first first uh, first go. Let me know how the audio levels are looking uh, as I fiddle with the music. Uh, I'm going to take you now to another map. I'm going to move the right, right. entire part here. Yeah. All right, Hello. here we are. Ooh the land surrounding the King's Rest Inn. You are all, of course, over here. Yes, thank you indeed. Um, and here is what the uh, locals would know. Um, I think, or maybe maybe not even the locals, but uh, people who would know what? Let me have a look here. Um, I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Balthazar. You know of another sorcerer nearby. She's called Shuthana. She lives in the Chained Tower, which is this weirdly kind of silent cha uh, tower that looks over the, uh, the, 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 the cliff rays. Let me find the actual, actual description. Here we go. Not too far away dwells a powerful sorceress, Shithana of the Chained Tower. Little is known about her. She's said to be powerful and secretive and doesn't welcome visitors. She is, however, extremely well informed. She might know what's going on. Um... Let's take a look here. Does someone else know the priestess by any chance? Someone knows the priestess, am I right? Who was the previous cultist? Oh, yeah, sorry, I realized you can't see us. You told us that at the beginning. Of oh, yes. Me! Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, you would happen to know that there is an ancient burial ground along the coast. That the dead are interred in sea graves that riddle the chalky cliffs. And it does occur to you, uh, if there is necromancer outrousing the dead, maybe they're holed up in the cliff graves. And uh, who would know about the Isle of Sanctuary? I guess Hector being a local, you would know all of the stories about the Isle of Sanctuary. Off the coast, there's an island that's said to be warded against the undead. A very fortuitous coincidence. Most of the locals, indeed, uh, including yourself, immediately their minds go to that, I I that, that isle and all of the stories their parents told about how it was a blessed place I, and that no evil could I touch have, it. Uh... I've done, uh, I, I do a, like a, a youth camp over the summers. Um, I'm really good at doing the scary, scary stories about the Isle of Sanctuary and everything. So yeah, right off the top of the head. Wait, isn't the Isle of Sanctuary really nice? Wait. Yeah, but all the creepy undead no, are yeah. near, the, near the cliff graves. Yeah. Right. Though, um, that is the information you have at hand. So I will adjust the uh, map slightly for the viewers. There they are. And so do we think that this place is about to be attacked? The, the, the inn? Look, the, the the night is even though the the night is old, this the, these beings seem to be young. They they seem to have come out of nowhere, um, and they, they they but they're getting thicker by the minute. As you sit here and watch, there are more figures shambling out in the uh, in the darkness, um, and they don't seem to be they, they don't seem to be like spreading out any. They are, they're getting thicker. 
So we have all right. to the problem of evil necromancies. Hmm? It is a. This is a pickle. This is a pickle. Um, uh, Inkeep, I'm going to suggest you and Klaus uh, get some boards up on the doors and, and windows and things. If you could have everyone stay low, dim the lanterns. Myself, but you want, and I think you you three seem capable. I think we should head out there and see what we can find. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you want us to stay here? Well, unless you're going to take them to your house. Well, th th this is my house. Uh, I'll live here, and, and, and I'll run it in, and that's what I can do. But I, I can't hold off an army of the heckin' un undead on, on my own. None of us can. We're farmers. You know that as well as anyone, Hector. As the music grows to a bit of a swell. Of course, but here's the, here's the thing. Do you want to come yeah. with us? Is that what you're suggesting? Because we're going to go and kill a bunch of uh, undead things and you can either stay and board up or you can come with and fight things and maybe die or you can go somewhere else. I don't care. We'll, we'll have to get to the aisle, don't we? Is that, is that where you're going? Of course, it is the obvious solution. All, all dead people at risk or people of great worth to society like myself should be taken across to the Isle of Wands. Lady Dorset speaks up. Yeah. <laughs> you with a tiny child, you're coming with us. No yes, choice. of course, you're bringing me to the island to keep me safe along the yes, way. That is exactly what we are doing, yes. Yes, I'm glad. <sighs> I'm gonna... Can I, I want to kneel down in front of our wizard and I put a hand on his shoulder and I was like, listen, champ, I know you've had a rough day. I mm -hmm. know things have been things have been tough. You, you handled yourself well out there. Thank you. you. I, I lift your chin up a little bit. You just need to be strong now for the evening, okay? You gotta you follow me, I'll keep you safe. You're in good hands, okay? If anything happens, come to me or, or Eric here, all right? We'll, we'll look out for you. My father was never this nice to me. <laughs> Uh, we, we all have, you know, we all try to do better than our, our parents. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mate. Um, all right, so we're making for the Isle of Sanctuary, are hey, we? Jackson, whoever is summoning all these is clearly a person of great power, right? That's fair to say. Uh, all right. Uh, where do we think the person? Oh, where do we think? The person <laughs> I don't know what voice I've got yet. Where do we think? The where do we think the person who summoned all these things is? Well, I mean, anyone. Well, we know who would know. I'm asking the group. I, I... Probably, um, how you say, in the place with all the dead things. The, the cliff graves, right? So yes. let's just head there. We'll leave these guys here. They'll be fine. Trust me, they'll be fine. We'll go there to the cliff graves. We'll kill whatever's causing all this, and then everyone will be safe. It's fine. Boom. Bada bing. Bada boom. You. Uh, yeah. You want okay, hold on. Hold on. You want to go to the place with the dead things that are becoming alive again without any kind of protection. You just want to waltz in there and then murder all of them. I don't need protection. I have spells. What happens when they come into your face and you don't have their spell ready? I can spell their face. Spell fist. <laughs> I have spell fist. <laughs> well, um, I mean, well, then off you go. Have fun. You can, and besides, you can hardly call what you do spells. I mean, oh, you oh, little prick. Sorcery. <laughs> uh, did you the just first? see what happened? <laughs> you, oh, you did nothing. Yeah, you did nothing. I lit them up. I, boys, I boys, 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 boys. I'm going to square them up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split them up a bit. Oh, boys, boys, Heck. come on now. Everyone, keep a level head, all right? We need to. The first priority has to be protect the innocents and those that can't protect yeah. themselves, all right? So no, yeah, we that's get our to priority. the Isle of Sanctuary. We drop these lot off, and then we can go. We all want to have fun tonight, all right? We all want to bash skeletons, okay? Hector that's in... after we protect these people. In all the confusion, no, I, Hector, I, I you, you feel a, a tug at your shirt. Uh, and you look down, there's a skeletal hand climbing up your leg, no. Uh, Anna is there. <laughs> She's come out of the uh, out of the cellar. And she asks you, what, what, what about Hathrid? Who's gonna save Hathrid? And Hathrid, of course, you know, is a, uh, a, a, a fisherman's, the, the, a, a boy of about 10 uh, whose parents uh, passed away. Uh, they were, they oh, were no. fisher people and they were lost in a, in a boat wreck. Um, off in the Midland Sea, and so he was taken in since no one else had room for him by Shuthana the Sorceress in the Chain Tower. In the Chain Tower. And no one's seen I... much of him, um, but only that he is uh, hes presumably becoming a Sorcerer's Apprentice. 
All right, I, I hike Anna up, so I'm holding her, and I say, look, kid, it's it, it's gonna be all right. We'll, we'll, we'll go find Hathred, of course. We'll go find Hathred. We'll, I, I look to everyone, and I, I nod to them so that they will nod back at me, and I go, we'll go via the chained tower, and then we'll head to the Isle of Sanctuary. We could use a bit more information anyway. Hector, mate, you're not getting me anywhere near that tower. I've told you time and time again, we're not going anywhere near that. There's all sorts of, 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 of nasty Please, business man, that Chithana is up to. Stop doing this. We're trying to help you. But Just you don't understand. She's cursed our lands, right? You, you know. You know. I told you, Hector, just last week. She she turned my we cow don't. into a slightly different cow. You, you have claimed that there was little evidence to support it. Well, I can it. tell the uh, difference. Yeah, 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 that's all I'm the not... evidence you need, mate. And I'm telling I, I'm you once, and I won't tell you again, you don't go near that chain tower. You right, take uh, us I to the island, to that'll be the end of it. Can I, he is uh, technically my employer, so... Uh, <laughs> can I can I pull out my great sword, which I feel uh -oh. is relatively well decorated, given what I, I do. Um, and I'm just going to like let it sort of thud very heavily in the ground in front of this guy who will not shut up his feet. And I'm gonna say, stop it. You're going to do what we say, or the skeletons can come and kill you. Da? And I would like to make an intimidation check or something similar to make him shut up and do what he's told. You, you, you have intimidated him to excess earlier in the evening. He shuts up and says, well, just, just, well, sorceress, I'm a, I'm a cow. Funnily enough, magic in the world is not the scariest thing you need to worry about, so this might actually be helpful, so neat. I've realized that no one's gonna get me a drink, so I've walked over to the bar and I've like leant over and I'm pouring myself a drink from the tap. Uh, I'm gonna hear this while everyone else is talking. Oh, uh, well, you do so and, and Kara would stand up and go, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. She starts sweeping up what's left oh, yeah, of the it's splinters of the here. bar. Uh, so there's much to be desired. I'll, I'll, I'll get that. And she wipes off the wipes off the foam. And, you know, uh, I'll see the opportunity to come forward and help. But uh, don't, don't worry, the sorcerers there. They're all like this. Well, you, you can you can Where's save it? us, aren't you? We're, we're I'd like to pull out my wand and examine it and and see if it's slightly longer than than the wizard's <laughs> wand. <laughs> oh, you're sorry. I don't use a wand. You see, real magic. You know. <laughs> Yeah, real bad. Bullshit. Uh, I snap at the two and I go, boys, <laughs> cool it, all right? We're in a bloody predicament, all right? We're in a pickle. We all know the stakes here. I want you two six feet apart, rest of the evening. I'm fine with that. No problem. I, I wasn't saying anything. So we can count to six to make sure we are. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Asshole. Um, hey, hey, language. Go, go read some books. <laughs> I do real magic. I don't read fucking texts. The right, night is growing darker. The undead are getting thicker. What are you doing? Guards, men, thing, whatever you are. Where, where are we going? You know the area? All right. So we're going to head to the chain tower. We're going to pick up the young fella. A few of us will go inside and have a look around. Not everyone. There'll be no risk of sorcery. Uh, so a few of us will have while the down spirit. And then we'll all make... For the uh, the Isle of Sanctuary, so everyone's gonna be safe. Is everyone happy with that? Well on board. All right, everyone, pair up. Make sure you're with someone, and you're gonna keep an eye on each other. We're not losing anyone out in the fog tonight, all right? We're, we're losing no people tonight. We're all we're all getting out of here. We're all getting out of here. All right, let's go. Buddy everyone system. Everyone get a buddy. buddy system. Uh, I carry Anna, and I cover her ears every time these two swear. Uh, <laughs> which is a lot. Good to go. Yeah, which is a lot. Walking out into the night with. Like, I don't bother finding someone. Yeah, Balthazar desperately tries to find a buddy, but uh, everyone gets buddied up and he's forced to be a buddy with Bulling Shimon. <laughs> <laughs> I have no buddy. If anyone brings up, I will point to sword and be like, he's buddy. All right. Mm. So as you uh, uh, shepherd the, uh, the, the farmers together, uh, as best you can, at least, um... 
you set off into the night, and in that case, we will have to run half of a montage. Oh, a montage, montage is a great 13th age mechanic where we put the dice down for a second, and because 13th age characters are, are, are so badass and competent and exceptional beings, um, they're quite good at just accomplishing tasks, even in the face of terrible odds. So uh, I would be keen to go around the table um, and uh, I'll, I'll go from uh, from uh, Alfred Glauder because that's the order the the overlay is in uh, Art Daniel David and Jamie. Um, we'll just do two 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 rounds uh, not two rounds uh, two turns now and we'll do two turns after the chain tower. But a montage is uh, one player. And I'm going to nominate Art being uh, by virtue of the alphabet uh, is going to tell us what kind of terrible inconvenience or hazard or threat is uh, going to stand between you and uh, the, the chain tower. Remember, the night is thick with undead and fog. Uh, the, the, the ground could be treacherous. Uh, the farmers are uh, untrained, simple folk. What exactly is about to go terribly wrong? Uh, I, however far in the journey we get at this point, um, skeletal hands start to burst out from the ground around where we are walking and are trying to like rent it down as, as more undead start to like bubble and boil up from the ground. That's a big yikes. So the, seemingly this wall of undead hands uh, are about to grab you and take you under. There is no way forward, certainly no way to get all of the, all the simple farmer folk across there. But it's a good thing that Balthazar was here. Because Balthazar happens to know exactly the way to deal with an entire field of undead scrabbling hands going for you. And Balthazar managed to uh, uh, circumvent or uh, uh, neutralize the hazard. What did Balthazar do when he stepped up to the blade? Um, Alright, so a bunch of, bunch of undead around us, yeah? Mm, yes, indeed. Alright. Um, <laughs> I've got so many fucking spy fire spells. Like... I'm just burning as we go. Like, I'm just like, like, this is like Vietnam and I've got a flamethrower. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm constant burn. Like, all right, come on. Let's just, and I think, can I be, I think I should be at the front carving a path through the undead. Absolutely. Uh, and someone else will have to be at the back. But I, I give no shits who's coming behind me, basically. I'm like, <laughs> I am making a hole uh, and, and whoever's Move coming. quick. Yeah, you guys have to get behind me, so someone's gonna have to keep in charge of the stragglers and keep make sure everyone's keeping up. I do not give a shit about them. I am just like, I am getting through this. I am. Uh, that is not my. Uh, is not my department. Outstanding. You summon the uh, your your uh, infernal heritage to your fingertips and you blast hellfire in front of you, uh, leaving everyone else to pick their way through the ashes behind. Uh, and so, just peeking out of the fog in front of you, far off in the distance, is the chain tower. You can see its kind of vague, foggy silhouette uh, just on the horizon. You're almost there but there is obviously something terrible between here and there that you're going to have to deal with. What was that, uh, David? So I create the, the terrible you thing. You sure do. All right. Uh, as we're getting closer, there's some sort of sound out in the fog. We can't tell the source. It's a, a keening whistle, which seems to uh, pique the attention of some of our uh, some of our travelers who sort of hear it and begin to wander off towards the sound, slowly becoming isolated and picked off. Yikes! All right, terrible sounds, uh, tempting like uh, like sirens. A sirens call, yeah. Uh, like a soundscape of sirens, a sirenscape, if you will, <laughs> um, which has got some delightful uh, accordion music going on right now. I'm gonna nuke that in a second. Um, but uh, it's a good thing that, and your character name isn't on the overlay right now, and I've already forgotten it. It's a good thing that <laughs> Bulling, Bulling Schmott was there. Yeah. Because uh, Bulling Schmott realized the danger of these of these calls out in the fog, and you just had to make sure that everyone stayed together and, you, and get everyone to the chain tower in one piece. What did Bulling Schmott do? Oh, uh, Bulling Schmott used. Uh, well, not exactly Bulling Schmott. Bulling Schmott uh, has a negative relationship with the Lich King. Uh, because Bullingshot stole the Lich King's former pet, a rat That's named right. Bones, a skeletal rat. And uh, knowing that people uh, like to wander off, uh, he, he, he's figured that you, t you scare him a little to keep him on the path. So as people start to wander away, a skeletal rat has come out and gone, Bleh! and, you know, scared <laughs> them back into, into place and is darting along. It, it's like a sheepdog, except it's skeletal and the rat. 
delightful. All right, and no one is any the wiser. They think the uh, the rat that bones bones the rat is yet another terror of the night. Little do they know, it's actually a friendly face keeping them on the right path. And so, in short order, the uh, the chain tower looms closer and larger and towers over you. But uh, before we take a good look at exactly what's going on there, I think I could use a quick five minute bio break. Is five minutes okay for everyone else? Excellent. Yes, wow. yes. Thank you all for. Oh no, I switched back to the overlay just to ask the question, oh, okay. so you're all good. Uh, thank you so much. If you're watching, uh, I don't understand why you're watching, but you're watching, and that's great. Um, feel free to join us in a bio break, and uh, we'll see you in five minutes. Thank you so much. See you soon.
Hello, welcome back. If you've just joined us, we're playing Swords Against the Dead, which is a fantastic one-shot, the 13th age, uh, a high fantasy, high action, uh, fantasy D20 game by Rob Heinzel, Jonathan Dwight. It's how we're having a great time. Uh, the uh, heroes have been staying at the King's Rest Inn, uh, which is a lonely little tavern on the King's Road, when they were suddenly assaulted in the dead of the night by skeletons bursting into the inn, taking hostages, but they are mighty heroes of the 13th age and the Dragon Empire after all, so they dispatched the skeletons of short work, but there seems to be an army of undead rising and uh, writhing in the fog around them, and someone should do something about that. So, uh, they've gathered up the farmers and uh, strode across the, uh, the, the foggy plains to the Chained Tower, where there is said to live a mighty sorceress who, you know, she's not behind it, maybe she knows something about what's going on, and that is where we find them. So, the Chained Tower. Much the protest, well, much the protestations of Horst, the, uh, the 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 barkeep, who says nothing good comes out of the chain tower, as I find the description of the tower stalling just a little bit longer. Here we go. The chain tower stands on a huge outcrop of rock, some miles inland. It's a spiky finger of black stone wrapped entirely in thick chains like metal ivy. But in fact, as you look closer, you get the sense it's a single huge chain of uh, varying girth that snakes around and around and around and around and around the tower, running in and out of holes in the walls until it goes up and uh, goes through a high window at the top and vanishes. The other end of the chain, after you come out of the after it comes out of the window and wraps around and around and around and around the tower, uh, the other end extends out through the air and it's tied to a huge engraved ring of metal, which is about 30 feet across, um, which has been in, seemingly jammed by some kind of giant into the rocky outcrop itself. Um, the tower is dark and seemingly lifeless, but the chains rattle and clink even when the wind isn't blowing. And listening closely, from here at the base of the rocky outcrop can hear someone snoring. Never. Never should come. We... Never should come. Should we sneak up on them? You do not see well, hang anyone. Hang on, remember, there's a, there's a kid in there somewhere, so let's not... Just don't go hitting everything you see. Right, that's an instant. But that's no fun. That's the priority. Hey, um, angry man. He's bigger than you want. Well, whatever happens, I just want you all to know that uh, me and the, the, the rest of the people from the inn are behind you. Um, You're going in first. Oh, yes, I'm not leaving any of you. <laughs> I'm staying right nearby. Right. All right, well, let's just go in. <laughs> Who's first? I'll look at you two. I pray vote. All right, well, I... Sometimes uh, decorum matters, so um, I say we knock. I will go up the stairs and clunk, clunk, clunk. Exactly with, right. Like gauntleted fist on door. If I could ask, what are the rest of us supposed to do? You're just going to leave us out here? Yep, good luck. And I walk up to the door. <laughs> well, no, I, I'd suggest you come with us. We're safer with everyone else than being out here. Otherwise, if you'd like to, you can stay out here and just be ready to enter rapidly if you're attacked. He doesn't like the look of going into the, the cursed sorceress tower, but he looks around and he realizes he doesn't have that many options. And so uh, the collection of you lead the uh, lead lead the uh, simple farmer folk up the, uh, the rough hewn steps in the rocky outcrop and you go to knock on the door, but you can't see one because the entire tower is totally wrapped in this thick ivy of metal chains. Um, you do seem to have like found where the front entrance should be um, because it's where the stairs lead to, but you'll have to get in there and start moving chains out of the way to try to find it. Uh, and as you stand right here at the, at the foot of the tower, the, the sound of snoring has gotten a little bit louder. Does it seem like the tower is snoring? Uh, it's coming from right in front of you. Is, are the chains moving or are they solid? Yeah, it's so weird. Even when the wind doesn't blow, they kind of clink and rattle as if they were blowing in the wind, but the air is still and foggy. Hello? Well, 
Well, um... I'm going to just, I'm just going to knock on the chains then. I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to just like clang, clang, clang. All right. They, they kind of, it's not a clang. It's like a, I can't, I can't make the sound of chains. It's not a clang. Rattling, You're yeah. just kind of like grabbing them and rattling them some more and you just kind of shake them. And uh, after you let go, they seem to like rattle and clink some more as the, uh, as the shaking slowly subsides. But uh, it doesn't seem to have had any other effect. Well, right. I'd like. Oh, sorry, sorcerer. Do you have anything you'd like to? Any any spells you think would be useful here? Um, <laughs> that was said like a wizard who does have exactly the right spell for the job. Oh, you know, so that's all right. Let me handle this. If uh, unless uh, that's all right. I'm more. To. I I I'm more. A, I'm more a battle sort of uh, sorcerer. Like I I just I I do cool stuff in battle. So oh. you, you take this one. You you need the uh, you need the win. Oh, oh, do do I now? Do I? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, shut up and I could uh, definitely handle this. Chain and when I'll the cast... two of you are done uh, comparing wand sizes, do one of you want to do something? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, sorry. Uh, um, I'll knock on the chain, and I will cast Speak to Item, <laughs> and say, "Hello, chain. What's the situation here?" <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, I should mention, by the rules of the law, which I don't know if you have them on your sheet, but speak with item is usually done with a magic item that one of the party has. Um, but the good news is, you're also a wizard, which means you're a ritual caster. And in 13th Age, ritual casters have the ability to just riff on spell effects. You can just take oh. a spell you know and go, ah, yeah, but as long as you're not in combat, you can go, I'm going to like just tweak it a bit. I'm going to change these letters around. I'm going to substitute, you know, I have Newt for, uh, you know, I have, I have uh, 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 Axolotl. Uh, I'm going to see if I can reverse engineer this spell a little bit. So yes, you can, you can in fact place your hands upon uh, the chain and see what it has to say. And so you reach out, you touch the chain, and as soon as you get your mind in tune, ah! the chain is screaming. That was uh, going for a little bit of a horror vibe here. The chain is screaming in pain. Um, I'll turn back. The chain says, ah, in agony. (laughs) Probably. Helpful. (laughs) Probably sick of hearing your excuses, sorcerer. Chain, tell tell us how we may enter the tower. Speak to us. No, if it's in pain, find out what's hurting it. Or that. Come, chain, communicate. Broken it's a chain. Broken <laughs> snapped. Ah, broken s- s- snapped. It says broken. It says snapped. It says uh it, say, it says the sorcerer needs to be out of out of here. It, say, it says send the sorcerer back downstairs. That, that that will help. Can I look and see if there are any broken links? It is you do not see any. It seems to be right. wrapping but it, but it goes and around into and the around tower at one point. Until right? the other end. Uh, disappears into the window at the top. So it's the only place that it could be broken. Hmm. This way. Unless it's also there's a point where it's anchored, right? Yes. Yeah, so the other end that doesn't uh, that part comes out of the window, okay. wraps around around the tower, and the other end is anchored to this enormous metal spike that's driven into the rocky outcrop uh, that seems to be carved <laughs> with runes. Quick point of clarification: you're certain you were speaking to the chain, not the tower. I'm speaking to the chain. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I have an idea. What can you climb up that chain? My character has an intelligence of eight, so no. Yeah. <laughs> can um, one of you guys yeah, climb up that climb? Ca- chain? And, uh, and like, yeah, it must go up to somewhere. Can I try climbing? You can. You would do that with strength roll. Um, let me see. It's got quite a high DC, I believe. Yeah, it does. Uh, yes, you can certainly try with a, a strength roll and appropriate climbing background. As much as I would love to argue that one of my backgrounds meant that I climbed a lot. <laughs> Sometimes I mean, they don't uh, line up. Huh? Sometimes they don't line up and that's okay. I mean, unless you'd allow that an inquisitor might occasionally have to climb <laughs> through windows instead of, you know, going through the front door because people tried to lock them out. I've I've done a fun run in the past <laughs> where we had to clamber up things. I, I don't want the background. I'm just saying I can't climb. <laughs> I, I would not allow that, Eric, but I can yeah, tell no. you the way I run 13th Age is the the, the uh, what rides on me allowing a background or not is the conviction to which you say it. So if you start the <laughs> sentence with, oh, it's, I don't really have a background except for, then uh, you're not going to get it. So no, just a strength, a straight strength roll. 
That's all right. My strength is still plus eight. Yeah, I, th I felt like that was a stretch anyway. <laughs> 21. 21 yeah, is yeah, uh, cool. not bad. So, in fact, you get all the way to the top, even though um, you uh, you feel the chains kind of uh, shake and, and rise uh, underneath you, as if it doesn't want to be climbed, as if as if like you can't help but, but think of the wizard's words as if it's writhing in pain. You do manage to get to the top of the window before a. Uh, a a link just kind of shifts before you grab it and you slip down you can't get a catch and uh you fall down like half a step there's a second of weightlessness as you feel your stomach drop and your leg is caught in a link you can have a hard time reaching it out but you have made it to the top and you can see in the window okay I'll look what do you see <laughs> looking also out if you fall we'll catch you you don't see don't even bother just inside the window where the uh, chain protrudes is uh, the end of the train and it goes into the uh, building somewhat looking inside you you seem to be seeing a, a dark there are no lights lit a dark study or library that seems weirdly bigger than it should be based on what you saw the size of the tower on the outside it seems ah. weirdly bigger um the immediately right in front of you the chain goes into the window and it is sure enough broken and twisted and flailing around as if like this enormous kind of gust is is, is blowing it all over the place snapping in pain you look down to the floor of the study you can see a uh what's it called a lectern uh a lectern in the very middle which makes sense so a study or a library full of books and uh, just on the kind of the edge of vision in the darkness is a figure lying on the ground. Can so you... I think this is like a TARDIS or something? I'm not sure. Hello? There just is... gonna yell through the window. There is no response. Uh, damn. Meanwhile, on the ground, you're looking up at Eric uh, scrambling up the chains, and you are uh, left alone with just the, fo the, the, the farmer folk waiting uh, with some impatience and the sound of the snoring, the ever-present snoring from somewhere can in I, front of you. Can I circumnavigate the, um, the, the tower? You shake a body. And uh, I'm, I'm looking for some way into the tower, maybe, maybe behind some chains or something. The chains wrap around like that. Exactly right. right like looking through and seeing if there's any like i don't know finding a hidden entrance maybe do you, do you take a buddy um no <laughs> bullying, spot, go, bullying spot go after him come on uh, good. On him. absolutely all right Thank well you, it, it's a short trip uh old hands um, from what you can tell, yes, the, 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 chain, I do not. <laughs> the chain completely covers the tower. There are no features that you can see past the chain except for uh, the window at the top. And uh, as best you could tell, like you got the sense that the front door was uh, at the top of the steps. But are you actually getting in there and pushing the chains around? Yeah, I think so. Like, I'm just looking like I'm pulling them apart. All right, pulling them apart in uh, different spots until you finally get right back around to where the uh, rest of the party is waiting at the top of the stairs. Um... And the music keeps uh, keeps dropping out. Let's see what we can do about that. Uh, you get back to the party at the uh, top of the stairs, and uh, sure enough, when you look, pull apart the chains, there that is where you see the the wooden door. It was fifteen minutes. Okay, the front door. <laughs> um, All right. Okay, is is it open? Uh, you see, like you put open a little bit. You see wood. Are you pulling the rest of the chains apart? Oh. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Let's just do it. All <laughs> Stop right. pulling the chains. <laughs> uh, Eric, your your leg is well and truly stuck. Do you have anything to say? Well, going to try and pull myself free. Uh, you certainly can. Uh, and since you already failed your roll, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of damage to do so. What wait, wait, ground, wait, can I organize people to like suspend a, a jacket and we'll be ready to catch <laughs> Eric? If they like a blanket. If I, yeah. if I see Eric struggling, I say, before you hurt yourself, I, I can get up there and help you if you'd like. Duh, thank you. Okay, um, all right. I'll click my heels together and cast Levitate um, and just zoom up. <laughs> levitate, fantastic. All right, you, you rock it to the top. And with some careful maneuvering, you manage to get Eric, uh, Eric's leg free, and you can <laughs> grab them and float back down to the bottom. Well, well actually, I'll pull. I'll, 
Yeah. Oh yeah. What I mean, would I you like to go up to the window, keep Excellent. levitating up to the window, and then step in? <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. Um, is, is Eric coming in as well? Oh. All right. And meanwhile, down the floor, are you uh, pushing open the uh, doors? Yes. Excellent. Um, I will deal with the door first. Chains are parted, and you are come uh, face to face with uh, a wooden door. And when I say face to face, I mean literally. There is a golden face carved upon it. It's quite an imposing figure. It's a stern face. These sorcerers, you know, you know, you know how it is. If you got a chain, to, if you got a, an enormous kind of sorcerer tower, you need to put an animated golden face upon your door. Uh, it's so cliche. It's, it's just like, <laughs> well, it's what you do. Like it's, it's like hiding the key under the mattress, uh, under the um, <laughs> under the mat. Exactly. Like, it's right. the first place people. People are like, well, it's so obvious that no one's going to do it, but everyone does it anyway. Like, you, and yet you know. once the uh, chains are parted, you immediately discover the sound, the source of the snoring. The face oh. is uh, fast asleep. Uh, it's kind of plain and featureless, except with a, a rune of uh, a rune carved, uh, not carved, uh, written in chalk on its forehead. Right. First thing I do is actually, can I make a check on that rune? Absolutely, Some that'd be an intelligence of... roll with any kind of uh, arcane uh, sorcerer's uh, background. Would you? you might e have. Oh, dark cultist is pretty is pretty rune like and 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 thingo -y. Yeah, that'll, absolutely. That'll is. give me a bonus. He said with a level of confidence. Um, <laughs> oh, 27. I've seen this room before. Outs I'm a sorcerer. This is like Sorcerer 101. <laughs> Outstanding. It actually, it actually is. It's one of the most simple runes. It's, it's the first rune you learn. It's uh, sleep. Oh, someone's cast sleep on this. It's a rune. Can I that erase says it? Sleep. You can. Right, I reach out and I rub it out. You take with, your sleep. You, you rub the chalk out. <sighs> <sighs> I have freed you from your bonds, door. You are now <laughs> mine to command, and you shall answer me. No, no, I just, I just had a nap. No, you were cursed, and I freed you from said curse. You are now bound to my will. <laughs> well, that was a good one. First nap in centuries. Um, no. <laughs> just, 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 just nap. You were cursed. <laughs> just five more minutes, all right? Lest I cursed you again, you shall answer me these questions. Oh. I demand it. All right. Well, you're gonna make a racket. Um. Uh, no, oh, uh, 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 adventurer who, who entreats entrance, um, uh, know that this is the tower of my mistress, Shuthana, uh, called by some the Keeper of Feud and Boar, she who slew the Devil Hydra. Uh, present your authorization or, or letter of introduction, and I shall open for thee. Uh, otherwise, I bid you flee from this place, let you uh, irritate Shuthana, and she turns you into a... Um, I, I, I don't know, what's your least favourite animal? Mine's a termite. <laughs> that does sound bad. Uh, as, as, you're, as, you're, as I have freed you from captive, I demand entrance uh, in, in exchange for, for doing you a turn of service. Well, no, hold on, that's not how this works. I don't even know who you are. For all I know, you're the one who put the root on me to begin with and put me to sleep. It just does sound like something I would do. Um, <laughs> uh, though in this case, I haven't. Um, uh, uh, tell us more about your master. Well, who, who do they serve? Shithada? Oh, I don't think Shithada serves anyone. She's her own sorcerer, she is. She's got a, a, an apprentice these days, as a matter of fact. Young boy, Catherine, came to us uh, a few months back. Yeah, he's doing quite well, but uh, no, she doesn't serve anyone, to the best of my knowledge. Um, all right, Jackson, I would like to pull out, I would like to uh, use, uh, we've been talking so much about letters of introduction. Can I use, oh, fuck, actually. What do you got? Ah, uh, I have a negative relationship with the Crusader. Mm -hmm. Who, I don't, uh, can I seek sanctuary in a way and be like, the Crusader is after me. There's a bounty on my head. I, I need to seek sanctuary here. And, Absolutely. and I, I demand a right of sanctuary under the, under the sorcerer's law. Sorcerer okay. to sorcerer, man. Like, please. Is that a five let, or, let or a six? Don't be a dick. Is that a five or a six? Is that a five or a six? It's a, five, it's a six. I've got six. zero complications. In that case, yeah, it happens with no problem. Oh, yeah. uh, well. well uh, Ancient uh, right of sanctuary. <laughs> Shifana certainly does not want to make an enemy of the crusader. Uh, all right, as long as you're quick, uh, I suppose. Do they all need to come in as well? Uh, no, just just this one. I point to uh, um, what are you? What's your name? Von Hector. Hector. I'm around the corner. I'm going. How's it going, mate? 
Yeah, come up, get, come inside. All right, all right, all, all right. right. Come around with everyone. Hang on, hang on. No, no, just you. Hang on, just, <laughs> just a moment. Mistress! Mistress! Someone here to see her! Something's wrong. Yeah, I had a feeling there was. Uh, can, can... And the door opens. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Meanwhile, mm -hmm. up in the top floor in the library, uh, two uh, adventurers float in through the window and look down upon the scene where a figure lays unconscious in the darkness. Um, uh, wizard child. Yes. Uh, what's your name? Uh, well, my 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 title was long for many years, uh, but once I gave up my heritage, I'm Bullingschmott. Bullingschmott. Yes. Um. People know me as Eric. Come on, let's go have a look around the place. Yes. I realize we did no introductions. Seems rude. Um, Why don't you check the body and I check the lectern? I'm kind of good at that reading thing. Okay, just make sure it doesn't explode. Okay, I <laughs> can't <laughs> my best. All right. Probably some good spells in here. Uh, sorry, I totally missed that while I was filling with music again. Uh, you're looking at the at the books? I'm looking at the lectern, and uh, my fine companion shall be examining the body. Excellent choice. The lectern is carved from the shin of a dragon. The dragon Ooh. bone lectern. It's heavy. It's kind of like bolted to the ground with the same metal that you saw on the chain. Um, and in fact, you can see the, the scattered kind of broken links of chain uh, are scattered all around this lectern, as if this is where the uh, chain once extended to. Could I start doing my best to repair the chain if there was any such way that I could? Um, you absolutely could. Um, would you like some, uh, some kind of uh, intelligence role? Yes. Um, now I was a scholar for many years. I think that this falls within the wheelhouse of scholardry. Repair the ancient ritual, you know, it's a standard element. Absolutely. Have a roll. Must die. Fiction. Uh oh. Sorry. I've got a very scary. Uh... Scary, inappropriate music track there. I hope no one in the chat minded that. Be an 18 from me. Uh, 18. Ooh, that is a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, 18 is 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 not fantastic for a 13th age character. It might be great for a for a D and D character, but because you're adding your level and because you rocked up levels so quickly, uh, an 18 does not do so well in this champion tier environment that you found yourself nah. in. Uh, but you get the sense like you start knitting them together. You start like waving your waving your hand and, and coaxing them to to knit, knit back together, and you see they are slowly kind of uh, inching along and, and and melding together once more. But you feel like it's going to take some time. Uh, you you started the process, mm -hmm. um, and in, perhaps in a few hours that chain will be whole again. Excellent. Um, well, I simply cannot afford to wait that long. Uh, may I? Uh, I need things to speed up. So can I invoke my relationship with the archmage to speed things along a little? You absolutely can. Uh, is that a, uh, a five or a six? That is a five. Uh, so I, I, I reach into the strands of magic, and uh, even though I'm not technically supposed to do that too much, but I'm very important, and I think I should be allowed to. And I <laughs> yeah, launch it full of uh, energy to make it go quicker. Absolutely. So in very short order, uh, the chain is fully repaired, and that's going to come back to bite you somehow. But who knows how? Possibly literally. And I do have an idea for it, but there's a chance I'm going to forget it. So uh, just remind me at the end of the entire scenario, I know what's going to happen. Uh, oh, sure. Meanwhile, across the other side of the study, uh, a paladin is kneeling on the floor. You, uh, you see this figure. What are you doing? I'm going to inspect the figure to see A, if it looks like a sorcerer lady, and B, if it looks dead. Uh, it is clearly a woman, and she is clearly lying in a pool of her own blood, and there is clearly a, a, a jagged dagger poking out of her back. And is yet... She uh, you, you lean over uh, close, put your hand on a, a, a near to her back or, some che or a chest and there are some ragged breaths and as she feels your breath uh, on her skin, one eye flitters open and you see her face now and she is a dark elf like you. Uh, right, um, hello, here to help, this might hurt a little bit but can probably save you. The book is it? 
Is it still there? She's reaching toward the lector. What does book look like? Cover imagery. The one on the lectern. Black leather. Red uh, ink. The lectern is bare. Is there a book on lectern? No book. I know books on lecterns, but there's no book on the lectern. <laughs> Grammatical <laughs> for you there. Duh. <laughs> um, does this does lady look like um? So I have an ability called lay on hands. You do. Which means I can give someone their recovery plus six. Outstanding. Um, she is an NPC. She doesn't have recoveries, but that will absolutely save her from certain death. Lovely. I'm going to do that at the same time I pull dagger out, because it's probably not a good idea to heal lady with dagger in. Quite right. All right. So the dagger slips out, the wound knits up behind, um, and she barely regains her breath back to to speak. She says, "Sorry, about that. thank you. I am glad you've saved me this day. But if the book is gone, then we don't have much time." Right. I, I must tell you, when, when I was young and foolish, I, I claimed a spell book that, that was written by the Wizard King himself. The first ruler of the Empire, you, you know him as the Lich King. I know that. The evil of the Lich King consumed the book and, and nearly consumed me. Uh, I was defeated by the Archmage and uh, as penance, once he wrested the book from me, he, he ordered that I should stay here and, and, and guard it with my life, which I, I almost did. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you fought the Archmage, and you're not dead. Yeah. Are you also Icon? Uh, no, uh, I never attained that uh, level of power, uh, nor, nor would I. I fear I was playing into the Lich King's hands when I stole his spellbook. Uh, he was using me, perhaps, to attack the Archmage and the Empire itself. Uh, uh, but we have no time for history. Uh, if the book is gone, it should be found. Uh, my, my apprentice, Hathred, he'll be able to... He'll... Hathred, he... He... Right. You must think... find him. I... No, I don't understand what's happening. But um, Hathred, Hathred, he must have attacked. He, he was, he was there. He, he was there, and I, I, and I was stabbed. Uh, he, Hathred does not have the book. The book has Hathred. Uh, the Archmage will come here. The Archmage will destroy him, unless you can save him. Okay, so book is uh, Lich King. There's a lot of skeletons outside. Isle of Sanctuary, important or not? Yes, it's watered against the undead. Uh, if, if perhaps if you can gather the the, the farmers, they, they they won't trust me. Um, maybe they'll trust you. I think we Are have enough information. Going... But um, sorry, after you, please. Are you going to be safe here? Do we need to get you to the isle as well? I need only to rest. Uh, I will be safe here. Uh, the, the, the farmers, they, they won't want to stay. Okay. Um, do you mind if I keep this? Hold up, dagger. You may. Also, do you recognize? Uh, someone with an icon relationship point to spend may be able to keep the dagger as a magical item, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it is non-magical and non-significant. <laughs> Perhaps you will take it downstairs and one of your companions will desire to spend an icon relationship point to claim it as a magic item or you may do so yourself. I will um, put it in a belt pocket and be like, I'll deal with that later. I think we'll need to have a conversation with our companions downstairs. I'll see you in a bit. Hope you survive. <laughs> downstairs, you have opened the door or the door has opened for you rather. Uh, this is, of course, uh, names are hard. Balthazar and Hector, I believe. Uh, and you have found like a, a scene of chaos. Items are strewn everywhere. Uh, it, it looks like the whole place has been ransacked. Um, the, the 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 finishings have been torn apart hastily um as though like by a common cat burglar um but 
it's strange. There are still items of great value. There's there's uh, some like gemstones and some fine silverware scattered around. Whoever was here was looking for something specific. Uh, and that is what you see as I'm, um, I'm skimming forward for time. Uh, that is what you see as you as you stride along, and I assume you're striding along uh, and investing in the rooms one by one. Um, but there was is one room in particular that where the uh, door is still closed, even though all the other doors have been kind of pulled open and and left and discarded. There is one door that is still closed. Oh, all right. Well, that's where all the treasure is going to be. So I blast it with I I I, I, I use burning hands and I. There, there is a whimper from the golden face of the front door as uh, one of his brothers is turned to ash. Oh, diddums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but regardless, you have opened up a, uh, a plain kind of simple bedroom. It's very sparsely decorated, very um, spartan in design. Um, it's got like a plain kind of single bed against one wall and uh, a plain kind of uh, chest with clothes at the foot and a very plain simple wooden desk at uh, at, uh, at one end uh, which only has uh, a few kind of scraps of paper and uh, uh, ink and quills and a small crystal ball sitting in the middle. Oh, crystal ball, crystal ball. <laughs> I run to the crystal ball. <laughs> oh, I kind of buried the lead there. Uh, of course, you're a sorcerer. You know what this is. Uh, this is, and I probably know what this is, um, but I can't remember what it's called. Uh, can I, can, can I, can I access the crystal ball and then like do something like run last program, <laughs> like run previous <laughs> program, like, like, what is like system or, lost? or I just hit, Star I just hit nine the, nine or something. Yeah, you I just can hit, yeah, redial, I hit redial. <laughs> you can because you know exactly what this is. This is a glass of heart desire. It's uh, once again uh, first class of uh, sorcery and, and wizard school. Is uh, it's a fun little little project that you get the kids to do. Uh, oh, it's, um, uh, I hate to interrupt. Sorcerers don't have schools. They're oh, not that's... real wizards. But please continue. Very good. Uh, the Sorry, we the don't blue need to study magic. The blue is the great dragon. Awesome. Is the mother of sorcery would probably uh, send you to Chris for saying that. But that's fine. Um, it's a glass of heart's desire. You, you can save into it an image uh, that shows uh, what the maker desires most. Oh, and what does the maker of this desire most? You pick it up and uh, uh, smoke blooms from within and smoke swirls and coalesces into a shape. And if you were... Uh, it kind of, it's like an image. It's a small kind of uh, moving image that repeats on a loop uh, and no one can quite agree on how to pronounce it um but it's an <laughs> gotcha. image it's kind of like a, a, a low kind of a high shot of uh, a small fishing boat and there's a middle-aged uh, couple in the boat and uh she's mending the nets and and he's scraping barnacles off the hull um they're kind of simple folk uh they seem their faces are careworn but they seem happy and they're, they're working away at their trade I throw it to uh, I th I throw it to uh, Hector and I say, oh, I'm, oh. I'm gonna... oh, you're elsewhere. I'll, I'll be I'll I'll be further. I think you, if you're going around banging doors, I'm not with you. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's I, fair. Uh, cold cock you. <laughs> all right, well I'll go I'll go. Oh, Harry Potter. All he wants is his parents, <laughs> and I put it in my pocket. <laughs> and I go and I rifle through other stuff looking for something valuable. <laughs> Uh, there is nothing valuable. There are clothes. There are these these are the fittings of an apprentice. No doubt about that. <laughs> It's so toxic. <laughs> what is my apprentice? I mumble about not having an apprentice of my own. And then I think <laughs> about the dwarf and I'm like, could be. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Hector, you're, you're kind of lingering near the near the out, outside in the front door and Horst is calling out to you. Uh, Mate, uh, I really don't like the look of this. It looks like they're getting thicker out here. Let's uh, get to the aisle, right? Yep, we'll go in a minute. We just need to see if uh, Hadfer's, uh, sorry, Hathred's inside. You, uh, uh, I want to. I'll just call out a few times for him. Well, make sure he's not. with the time you have, you case the joint and it is otherwise abandoned until you get to the top floor, where you run into your companions. Okay. I also do my best. Uh, when they find me, I've righted a few chairs and put things <laughs> a bit back in order. It's he's like picked up after here. me mostly. I was yeah, mostly. tearing, like opening chests, pulling things out. Go, ah, it's all shit. Did you invite ah, Shithana to uh, to the Shindig on Sunday? Uh, I mean, I have no qualms with it. I probably would have. Yeah. Okay. I sent it. There's 
there's actually maybe when we open the door when did this happen because my letter may have been <laughs> slipped under the front door and never read uh yes i think that's you you'll find it torn 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 in half and scattered somewhere oh. uh near the Gosh. uh well it's probably torn in half and then uh you find it uh inside hathred's room torn in half it was torn in half but then it seems to have been moved and uh you find it in hathred's room where he's placed okay it. Yeah. Ah, um, Hector, good to uh, good to spot you. Uh, you made it through the door, I see. Yes, yes, uh, charming fellow. Yeah, really nice. Doing a great job keeping the door closed. Uh, yes. Our young companion, a uh, small. No, he's not small, is he? You're the shorter one. Uh, our companion spoke to And him. proud so, of it. Now, oh, I'm actually smaller than him. I'm a halfling. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then, yes, our shorter <laughs> companion got us to the door. Situation seems to be that the owner of this tower was attacked by their apprentice who has stolen a book formerly belonging to the Lich King. Probably gone okay. towards the uh, grave, the, the cliff graves, to do all kinds of dead-raising things. So my thought would be... Uh, we. We'd probably go to the Isle of Sanctuary, drop off all the vulnerable people, then go to the cliff grades and try and wrest the book back from the young uh, misled child. But uh, thanks to, and I'll uh, clasp um, our pallet on the shoulder, uh, thanks to some finely expertly applied healing magic. Um, it probably we... hurts. My, my, yeah. my armor is beautiful, but it's still got a hangover from the Crusaders, so there's just like just spikes my... on it. Thanks to some finely, ow! <laughs> oh, ow. Okay, thanks to some expertly applied healing magic, which I could use some of right now, uh, we have managed to save the life of the tower's owner. So I would propose, I also repaired a chain, so I feel like I was involved as well. I propose we try and convince the people downstairs to stay in here because it will save us a trip up to the Isle of Sanctuary, and we're kind of in the good books now. Then we can tear straight towards the cliff graves. The, uh, I mean, first of all, a plus work from both of you. Three gold stars in my book, and uh, I'll remember that. So, good, good groundwork. I, I look good groundwork, I, but I, I do think you know. Technically, you, we were uh, first floor, not ground, but okay. Oh, it's a saying. What? So, uh, I don't. I don't think the uh, the farmers going to be thrilled about being here. I'm happy to pitch it, but I Too do think if they'd be bad. safest on the. Isle of Sanctuary, then that's where they need to, to go. Sanctuary quickly, we drop them off, we have a montage, we get to the place we need to go, and then we, we smite some things. Oh, I'm I'm big fan of suck it up, princess, stay in the fucking tower. <laughs> I, I, I hear you, and I think we could drop them off, uh, but I, I do agree with the halfling here. We're here now. Oh, and... We on the same side? Oh, I hate this. Well, mm, yes. No. Well, f anyway, frankly, I, I think speed and efficiency here but they you know I, I, I it, it's risky to travel across the country and for all we know there's some kind of terrible problem at the Isle of Sanctuary which could stop us getting there I mean I don't have a boat to get across there'll well, be boats there are boats down the dock fishing folk around the area do we have to go all the way to Sanctuary or do we just get them to the boats and then they go themselves if you get us to the I boats know. we can take it from there we just don't like getting out in the fog at our own well, I think getting them to boats is on the way, one way or the other. Looking at map. Yes, right. sure. Obviously, I have four reasons. Because right. I'm traveling. Oh, Which... for, for, for the record, uh, like, nice nice groundwork there, wizard, but, uh, and I, I pull out, I pull out my, uh, my, uh, the crystal ball, and I hold it up to my eye like it's in a magnifying glass. Uh, uh, according to uh, my deductions, uh, the young apprentice will, of course, use the, is going to try to use the book to summon his pe dead parents, and I throw it. Like, actually, no, I, why would I throw ah. it? I just hold it, it, it because that is the thing he desires most. Uh, just to, you know, obviously, but that would just catching you guys up on, on the situation. Rather smart, I do admit. I, you have some wiliness to you, halfling. Can I see the orb? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mine! I found it! The night is dark and growing thicker with undead. What are you doing? Alright, let's roll. We're going to take the people to the place with the boats, and then we're going to go to the place with the graves, and then we're going to kill somebody, probably. Uh, no! We're going to re kill somebody, yes. Mm. Duh. We're going to acquire a book. We're Even going to read dead undead. Sounds a plan. Alright, so, uh. 
Excuse me. Uh, you gather the farmers up once more and set out through the fog and uh, this time in reverse order uh, oh actually it's a key detail I always forget when I run this Eric just before you uh, left the study since you were the one to uh, save uh, Shuthana's life she would uh, gesture down to you one last time before you turned to leave she said use the word call them call the chains and they will come and she whispers uh, a magical command word in your ear. Call the chains well, when you find him, or, or, or whenever you have need of them, and they will come. Cool. Um, uh, and <laughs> um, I will say, and likewise, you need. Uh, I'll actually switch to to elvish or, or or undercommon or whatever the equivalent of dark elvish is in this world, and be and say, of course, my lady, and should you ever require service uh, or, or security in your time of need, do please call upon me and I will give my full name. And if you've ever heard someone try to pronounce that Welsh town, that's like 22 letters long. It's that, blah, 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 blah. essentially. Um, but I-, I Does the start little... of it sound vaguely like Eric? No. <laughs> Eric here or something? None There's of no it Eric sounds- oh, okay, never mind. It it's just completely Eric made up. All right. Like Eric. Um, <laughs> It, it, my name is the the Elvish name has nothing to do with Eric. Eric is just the the name he heard and chose, <laughs> um, and will say, "By your leave, good lady." Excellent. Amen. And you Can uh, I also very quickly, if I may, I have the feeling I've done something terrible by repairing those chains. So I'm just going to leave a note downstairs which said, "By the way, fix the chains." Ta ta, and uh, ditch it by the door. You said well, out. I think you did the right thing. I think the chains are holding something together. I'm terrified that when we call the chains, they'll go, oh, we'll save you, clink, 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 and not come. <laughs> you uh, set out into the night once again, gathering the farm folk. Uh, Jamie, you set off into the night, and yet it doesn't take long before you realize uh, something is going to stop your way, something terrible, something to do with the fact that perhaps you tarried too long, something to do with the fact that uh, the, the chain tower is the nearest landmark and you're trying to leave it. What is going to pose a terrible danger to you leaving the chain tower? Of course. Well, the first threats that came pouring out of the cliff's graves were the most animated, the most live and the most active of the skeletons that came charging forward. But there are also a lot of very, very decayed and dying ones that have now been slowly making their way across the countryside. Now, they don't pose a threat to us in terms of, you know, a fighting terrible skeleton because they can hardly move, but they're covered in mushrooms and mold and moss and all kinds of terrible things and this faint cloud of toxic spores is now drifting over the field in front of us that we'll have to disperse in some way or find a way to navigate safely. Of course, that's a big yikes, but it's a good thing Hector Von Beers was here because Hector Von Beers knows just what to do with terrible zombie spores when they're rolling down the hillside from an army of undead emerging from their, their restless sleep. Uh, it's a good thing Hector was here to, to neutralize or circumnavigate that hazard. What you're looking at here is rotten meat. And as a grill master, I know how to deal with meat that's off its prime. Everyone, all right, we want gloves and things, face masks. We're just going to circumvent around it, uh, make sure no one breathes any of this in, and do not cook it and serve it to people. That will kill them. Uh, I am applying my grill master to, I guess, intelligence, which is eight. Rock and roll. We, this is once again a... a, a, a uh, oh, you don't roll these, A montage. <laughs> we put the dice down. We just <laughs> tell, it, tell a cool that. story. So you tell me what exactly... The, the, how does your grill master skill serve you right now? Uh, and it works. Yeah, we, Whatever we you're trying to, to do, it works. I got you. We, we know how to deal with all the sort of like the spores and things. It's basically about face coverings and everything and just circumventing around the whole thing and, and, and pushing on. Brilliant. All right, so it doesn't take long to uh, duck out of the way of the spores and make it down uh, toward the cliffs. But just as the uh, the docks are in sight, obviously something is terribly wrong. Uh, as you've circumnavigated most of the undead and made it through the fog, but something uh, stands in your way. What is that, uh, Daniel? Um, so as we're headed down to the docks, uh, there, there's two, there's sort of, so there's like a, I don't know if it's a cliff, but it's pretty steep. 
and the main road down, there's this big shambling mass of undead that's been formed together, and it's just standing right in the way of the main road down. Uh, and it, it is just like an amalgamation of, like, like bodies pressed together. It's just a big hunk of rotten flesh and make between us and the uh and the docks all right the only narrow road to the docks down the cliffs is uh gunked and terribly uh littered with with recently deceased uh recently twice deceased i guess but uh <laughs> eric is the right paladin for the job what does eric do okay. i'm assuming that the path in my brain at least and that is like how it is is a switchback absolutely so this thing is like absolutely. on the edge uh but like, so there's like a, a, a sheer sort of cliff and then the path and then sheer again and then path. Uh, we've already already established that Eric's armor is covered in spikes. So he's just going to slam an arm into the, uh, the sheer rock wall, slide down it and just like kick this thing off the narrow path. So it just like rolls down the rest of the hill scattering onto the rocks beneath me like gets down on the path like dusts off the spikes it's just like duh outstanding in very short order eric has cleared all of the uh the, the bloated corpses from the road and has made the way clear down to the docks on the beach which is where i'm gonna take you now hold on one second Characters move party to this area right here. Oh, hello. Uh, as I get the, I've got one character called Streamcam, who is what the viewers are seeing. I'll move, move them out of the <laughs> way. There we are. He's dead. The Streamcam is dead. Oh well, he had a good run. Uh, and uh, oh, there we are. Now the viewers are seeing the map. Um, and I've cropped this terribly. I apologise. It's like I was going this way, but the viewer is that way. Mistakes were made. Let's see if I can get it looking a bit better. Funny having a battle map for safely seeing people off. And Funny. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I that's why. That's why. That's why I'm taking my time. I'm just sitting on the beach with my back to the to the uh, trees because nothing's going to come out of there. And I'm just watching people go. I'm not really paying attention to anything. This is all fun. So yes, I'm helping people into boats. Uh, briefly describe to me what uh, what manner do you uh, what activities do you take up to help people get into the boats? I do not. I assume if I walk on the docks with all heavy armor, I'm just going to fall through. So I'm going to stand on the end of the dock and just kind of scan everything because I don't know. There's been lots of dead things. Also, maybe I will look for book. Look for book. Uh, yeah. where are you looking for a book? I don't... I did not entirely constantly. understand why the book is gone or why it's important, but she did lady, nice lady describe the book, so I'm going to just kind of look for book. That's very kind of you. Um, place yourself where you will, whether you're assisting farm, uh, farm folk or uh, 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 looking for a book. Probably I'm going to just stay where I am and, like, scan and look for things. Excellent. Uh... Be perceptive, probably. And yet, it. Uh... Oh yes, we've got a little bit of time. A little bit of time for a cheeky fight. Uh, helping the uh, helping the uh, the farm folk into the boats as best you can. Looks like you got about halfway through. There is one boat with uh, a couple of farm folk loaded on, and it is slowly being pushed pushed as it has been pushed um, out from the docks. And some other folks are just about to be loaded in. Uh, it looks if I like. May. Yeah. If I, I'm so sorry. If I could be, if I could be helping the noble and loudly kind of no, Absolutely. no, very happy. I'll carry you. You're know, trying to score points over this person. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Hector, I have placed Anna in the boat first by default. Would you I like appreciate to? That uh, very much. Is that where you'd like her? Yes, that's, that's perfect. And also, as I'm helping in uh, Horst, the barkeep, uh, I'm I'm giving him instructions for on the other side how to keep people safe. I'm also reminding everyone that I'll see them all safe and soon on Sunday. And uh, yeah, what's happening so, on Sunday? Lovely. There's a party. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, of course, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the only one. <laughs> I know you'll be there. Yeah, no, we'll be there. Yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries, here, mate. Yeah. I am also hoping that. Uh, I'm not going to be going with you, so uh, look, I'll, we'll sort out payment later or something. But um, 
you good to guard yourself from here on out, right? Uh, well, I mean, if you're going to the cliff graves, Max, you, you're going to be needing to guard yourself, that's for sure. I appreciate that. All right, and there is a there is a tug at your uh, at your back once more just before Anna is loaded onto the boat, and she'll ask, "Did you did you find Hathred? We didn't, but we know where he is. We're going to go make sure he's safe." Okay, thanks, Dad. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, and it is just as the boat is pushed off, and Lord, uh, Lady Dorset is uh, deigning to have her hand helped down when there is a cry. There's a cry from the beach, a cry of a, a war horn from an age past. It echoes uh, as if through the annals of time, and it echoes and reverberates through the fog. You turn around just in time to see several skeletal knights and archers galloping straight down the cliff, making for the beach uh, upon spectral horses. And you have but a moment to roll initiative. <laughs> Bob Bowie. Initiative, yeah. As I move them a little bit closer, just so the folks at home can see. <laughs> there they are. All right, and you've all, all, all rolled initiative before I have, so let me get that going. Oh dear. Uh, that's not bad. All right, and yet I failed to reset the initiative from the last round. So, I have to restart it once more. I'm going to add the party. I just read out your initiatives for me. It might make it a little bit easier. 20. Uh, Balthazar is 20. My, my, uh, sorry. Mine is 20, 20, uh, 20, 20, 21. Oh, yeah, sure it is. One better than me, of course. <laughs> uh, Hector is 18. I can see them now. That's all right. And uh, I'm, Eric is 17. Yeah, Oh, and the uh, knights are at, uh, from the map. Yeah, please add. Oh my gosh. It says, do you want to roll initiative for every farm folk? No, that's <laughs> Would right. I? They'll just do their best. That's fine. All right, now we're in business. So uh, the skeletal knight is up first. They will charge straight down the beach. Uh, and I believe they get a bonus to their attacks because they are charging because they were unengaged at the start of the turn. So uh, two of them are, of course, going to challenge upon their spectral horses the first knight they also see. So they charge straight into Eric um, with their rusted sword. Oh no, they're deadly charge. Uh, the first one is a natural one. And I kid you not, the second one is a natural one. They both <laughs> uh, swing <laughs> wide and... Uh, I'd like to know what my armor whoa. class is. Well, please do tell me. It would amuse me so. Uh, 22. 22. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So not, a natural not one. one. It's, not, not, it's not one. Isn't quite going to get Zero. it, I think. Thank you so much. Um, and now I know. So, um, with the Skeletal does Knights... Does one count as a crit? It does not. In what sense? What were you asking for? Oh, just because, like, critical... I know crit is usually, like, critical 20, but I have things that, like, once... When when an enemy criticals, you are an ally, and I'm like, it'd be great if critical oh, yeah, counted for both. No, you well, you probably want to save that when you are actually getting killed. Oh, it's once per turn. Oh, that's not bad. Regardless, yeah. <laughs> uh, they do not crit you. Uh, bullying Schmott. What are you doing? I will turn to, towards... Uh, the Why don't you levitate yourself? I'll turn towards Noble Woman, ignore the calls uh, from my aggravating halfling companion, and say, excuse me for a minute, won't you? And I'll turn and cast a uh, Force Salvo. A third that level sounds pretty good. <laughs> a, th uh, th uh, th a, a third level spell. So I target up to five different creatures. Um, I will uh, start firing salvos at them. Right? Uh, yes, I, indeed. Um, also, I am oh, uh, alerting you in advance. I will be using my evocation ab ability, which I can use once per battle to max the damage of each of these salvos, which means that they, on a hit, they will deal 40 damage. That um, is so gross. I will be making five missile attacks. There is the first one against Skeletal Knight 1. There is literally an FAQ on the 13th Age website that says, Hey! The wizard of my party keeps you keeps evoking for salvo. Do you have a fix for that? And uh, Rob no, Hanks no. has has an entire paragraph. He says, "Well, yeah, if your wizard is taking advantage of evoking for salvo, here are the here are the ways to fix that." I don't know what they are, so go for it. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> <Bam>! <laughs> 
Um, so, uh, attacking Skeletal Knight 1 first. That is 11 versus PD. Uh, let me have a look. I will tell you their PD all at once. Um, their PD is... The uh, Knight's PD is uh, 15. Oh. And the Archer's right. PD is... Uh, also 15. Okay, so Skeletal Knight 1 still. Second attack. Boom. 28. Yeah. Crit. So is that a crit? That's a crit. That'll do double damage. So 80 damage to Skeletal Knight 1. So is that 8-0? Eight, 8-0. Zero? Eight, zero. A 1-8. Eight. <laughs> 8 eight, zero. Double 40 damage to 8-0. Please go on. All right. Uh, Skeletal Knight 2. Uh, 13 Jeez, miss. Skeletal Knight 2, 22. So 40 damage to Skeletal Knight 2. Hot dog. Okay. And... Uh, 16, so another 40 damage to Skeletal Knight 2. Because this is you revoking them for, for max damage. Yes. Um, fantastic. Can you get two attacks on, I guess? Yeah, well. No, you can only hit each target once. As, um, actually, it says it says you can keep targeting the same creature until oh, until you hit until you the hit, bolt. And okay. you have to In which case, one. the last one hits Skeletal Mounted Archer. I am so for draw to report that they all have exactly 40 hit points. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, Please. there ah. is a blast of uh, <laughs> energy as uh, uh, Rob Haynes of course curses me that I didn't read his FAQ on the website about how to fix evoking for Salvo as the uh, Skeletal Knights burst into dust which is picked up by the sea breeze and blisses over them. And uh, you can only uh, imagine, uh, well, no, we don't have to imagine it. Bulling Schmutz absolutely tell us the look in his face as Lord Balthazar has his turn next. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. Of is, one of those, is one of those a daily? Like, can you only do that once a day? Oh, uh, for Salvo, I can only cast once a day. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, um, I'd like to move vaguely in this direction uh, to be nearby this skeleton. Good call. Actually, I don't think I do. No, that's yep. nearby, uh, that's good. Yep. And I would like to use Fork, fork Lightning at him. Fork Lightning, excellent choice. Pull it up. Uh, oh, 14 is not enough. That's just one off a hit, I'm sorry to say. So I'll do half damage. Half damage and... Uh... For 15 Lightning damage. Yeah, and it wasn't natural uh, even, however... so you can attack someone else, but believe it or not. Yeah, I would like to attack uh, Bullingthwaite. <laughs> 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 right. If you can levitate that damage a little, you might have a chance as a wizard. Oh, why don't you talk to object, mate? <laughs> All right. The archer is going to continue the charge. Uh, oh, Eric also rolled a 17, but monsters have been tied. The second rough, the second uh, combat in a row, Eric. Uh, I think it's me. I'm on 18. Oh, I, I first. totally missed that. Yes, indeed. Hector, what would you like to do? I, I push my way through the group and I say, continue your retreat, we'll cover you from here. And I think I have to use my full, that's a long way, I'll continue to rush to the archer. That's You'll turn your stand action to a move, that's totally fine. You have a long bow, I believe, if you want to pull that out. Ah, range weapons are my cowards. All right. I have to get myself between the innocence and the evil archer. That's outstanding. Stop at nothing. You have done a great job um, because he was absolutely pulling his bow out and about to uh, shoot into the crowd. Um, hopefully at uh, uh, bullying schmott, but he doesn't, hapless child. doesn't really care who he hits. But because you have closed the distance and he's making a range attack uh, in your face, you can have an opportunity attack. Oh, tremendous. Uh, Which is just a basic attack, nothing nothing fancy. Yep. Gotcha. I don't believe you can be flexible on an opportunity attack. And it's a hey. crit. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. What is the crit uh, do again? What is it? What is uh, just double the yeah. damage. Roll damage is normal, and uh, dam d double it when you're done. Okay. 42. Dead. I think it might be dead. 42. Yeah, that sounds pretty dead. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's that's totally fine. I mean, look, we're we're kind of maybe sort of on a time limit, so you know. All right. Do they do they look at all like do they look like long dead skeletons or recent? Uh, these ones are much more recent than the mooks in the inn, that's for sure, because the mooks just kind of turned okay. to dust. Whereas these ones had a little bit more fight to them, or okay. so, I'm so I hurry. thought. I hope you find peace. 
and that's fine. Look, it's not like we needed any of those high level abilities we'll, for whatever we'll we're bury you. All right. Um, uh, you're muted there, Jim. Muted. <laughs> I continue to help the noble woman into the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what were you doing in all of this? I was like reaching for sword, and then everything dies, and I just go, oh. "Huh? These, these people are—they're not like completely useless." <laughs> Interesting. You and then, are... like, just sort of cross my arms and stand there, keeping an eye out. Also, do I see book? You see no book. Have, have, a, have, a, have a wisdom roll for me with a background that allows you to spot books. Book check. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was a Sanctum Guardian. I have seen many holy tomes before. I know what I'm looking for. Uh, you don't think the Inquisition searches for stuff? That too. Yeah, and especially... Uh, you know, arcane artifacts. Yeah, like especially <laughs> to do with because I'm I'm a priest, uh, was crusader, anti demons, now priestess, anti lich. I like... don't know why I'm being so hard. Yes, you can add any background you like to find that specific lich king spell on this beach. Yeah, 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 on this beach. I mean, then I'm obviously gonna add my inquisition because that's like super fire. Travis is like, I don't know if this applies in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> We're all like, yeah, the book's gonna be on this beach. So you're super gonna help me. All right, I've got a six, fifteen. I rolled a five. It's all good. Uh, a fifteen. Uh, well, that's just fine. Um, <laughs> oh, of course, it's not enough. <laughs> you you see no book, but uh, I do notice you happen to have a. Do you still have a relationship with the Crusader that you haven't spent yet? That's six. No. Oh. Was perhaps uh, one of the skeletons you slew holding a sword of the Crusader that you may wish to take up? I am awesome. fancy. Is, uh, how fancy is the sword? Because I was good. planning on keeping this for maybe the final battle, but... Oh yes, for sure. Uh, let me have a look. I'm looking at the Book of Loot, which is a fantastic book of magic items for, for 13th Age. Um, all, really sorted, nice all sorted by uh, icon, so you can um, look stuff up by which icon you would find a magic item from. And this is an animated cool. sword. This is one of the Crusaders... I'm looking at the Archmage. Yeah, why would, why would the Crusader have an animated sword? That is totally an Archmage thing. Uh, it fucking swings yeah. Let's have a look. Crusader, there we go. What kind of weapons does the Crusader have? All sorts of good stuff, I'm hoping. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Outstanding. It, it was not a sword, it was a scabbard that was uh, uh, strapped to the skeleton and a weapon drawn from this sword belt inflicts an extra 1d8 damage with your first Ooh. hit each battle. Pretty sweet. That's not bad. I That's have bad. smite is fine. My smite adds 1d12 anytime like, I It want. was a trick of the light. It was no <laughs> such scabbard. No such scabbard. <laughs> it was a normal one. <laughs> It's good. Thank you, though. But I have, uh, I have innate abilities. My <laughs> pleasure. All right. So oh, I will keep that on the off chance I need to lay on hands more than once. That's an excellent choice. All right. That's fine. Um, cool. So we I this... will. I will eventually, when everyone is around again, pull out the dagger and be like, "Does this look familiar to anyone?" On the off chance anyone wants a magical dagger. Yeah. Anyone want a magic dagger? No. No one oh, I'll take a magical damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me, give me, give me, give me. In exchange for a uh, magic, uh, an icon relationship. Yeah, Diablerist. Yep, Diablerist 5. It will have a negative to it, but I. <laughs> give me that dagger. Uh, throw that poison dagger. Throw that poison dagger, did you say? Uh, I did. Let's have a look. All right, what kind of uh, cool stuff does the uh, Diablerist have for you? Ah, that's kind of lame. <laughs> Let's see what else. Okay, got. then then I don't take it. Yep. Here done. we go. It's <laughs> a, you say this is a five? Yeah. Perfect. It's an eager dagger. If it eager. strikes the first okay. hit in a battle, not only is it a, a, a champion tier, so a plus two to attack and damage, but also if it strikes the first hit in a battle, it is an automatically critical hit. Ooh. That is so much better for a five than my six scabbard, yo. But, <laughs> but <laughs> if it's not the first thing to hit in the battle, it'll bite you. Oh. 
So auto crit if it's the first. Oh, so if oh you no, don't no, no, I'm use sorry, I'm first, wrong. Like if, it uh, really wants if to it's, do it. If it's not the first hit, then if you roll a, a, a one for the rest of the, a natural one for the rest of the battle, it fights you. That's so funny. It needs you to use it really quickly because it's Kane. Yeah, that's great. Uh oh. Do you like it? Yeah, this is not that good for me. I, I do not use take daggers. It, take it. Don't be a coward. Yeah, I do it. I take it. <laughs> Excellent choice. Did I already give you a wand as well? Yeah, I got a wand and a dagger. I got one in each hand. <laughs> Sweet. Love your work. Uh, go up and stab oh, people. With downsides. Is it my first hit or is it anyone's first hit? Anyone your side? Your you are your allies. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, automatic crit's pretty sweet. Yeah, like, yeah I know, but up. like, yeah, just chuck right. it, chuck it at people. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm... <laughs> or immediately give it to someone else. But as soon as, as soon as one of you guys go before me, I'm fucked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All I right. And roll the one. That's true. Only on ones. Fuck it. Yeah, let's do this. So, with your loot in hand and your loved ones and uh, farmer folk uh, safely in boats. Um, you turn and you set off once again to uh, the Cliff Graves, I believe. Yep. No. All right. And there's a clock running down. We won't bother a montage this time. But as you get closer, uh, and you don't need a montage because, to be honest, the real challenge was getting all of those untrained farmers through the uh, mess of undead and through the fog in the dead of night. You are adventurers. You're used to this. You know how to work as a team and kind of uh, deal with any threat with uh, as it arises without any trouble at all. So. Yes, um, party dead keeps boys in line, and Derek has buddy. The sea cliffs along the demon coast have been used as a burial ground for many ages, and at first the dead were interned in, interred in natural sea caves at the base of the cliff, looking across the waves to the Isle of Sanctuary. But over the ages, the fame of the site grew, and many wealthy nobles or, or fallen heroes have been laid to rest here. Um, so the faithful dug tunnels and galleries into the limestone cliffs and carved more burial chambers higher up on the cliff face all the way up, the temp up to the temples that they built atop the cliffs. And then uh, the earth quaked. One day the earth quaked and a hollow the hollowed off cliff partially collapsed and fell into the sea, um, and leaving the, the graves beneath exposed the elements. So no one goes here anymore. That is what you're coming up against. And that is what explains the hordes of undead that are seemingly like pouring nonstop out of here. It's because it's not just a little cemetery on a cliff. It is caverns and caverns and tunnels and tunnels of graves and tombs is what you are climbing towards. So you come across the edge of the complex, still having uh, managed to uh, evade the notice of any of the armies of undead. When you look back, you, you, you think to yourself to look back and, and look back to the Isle of Sanctuary and wonder if you shouldn't have waited there for the, for the, uh, for the dawn to come. Uh, when you notice that, sure enough, there are some torches that have been lit in the island. You can see several small figures um, milling about, uh, trying to stay warm, trying to uh, pass the time through this terror-filled night, when you all notice something else. There's some kind of commotion at the very base of the cliffs. At the very base of the cliffs, from the water, there is suddenly like this stirring and shaking and bubbling and whirling of the water. The, uh, the, the, the object breaks the surface and it's difficult to describe. It's, it's kind of like a bridge. It's not quite a bridge, it's more like a causeway that's floated uh, and burst through the waves made of congealed and thrown together bone and grave dirt. And as you watch some skeletons, not only uh, humanoid skeletons, but giants and orcs and ogres and all sorts of nasty things, the bones of them l uh, leap up from the, from the bridge and start to knit themselves together, assembling into skeletons and arches, and you're simply too far away to do anything about it. The bone, the bridge of bone, snakes, then begins to snake away from the cliff graves through the water, swimming, gaining speed as it does so, straight toward the Isle of Sanctuary, where with a mighty crash, it collides and stops dead in front of an invisible magical barrier. Hell yeah. And it retreats slightly, and then it Sucking turns. zombies. 
and tries to swim around the island, getting as close to the island as it can, swimming around faster and faster, seemingly searching for something. The skeletal archers on the uh, on the bone are trying to take pot shots at the at the island, but as far as you can tell from this distance, uh, no one is being killed yet. And then all of a sudden, the bridge stops where it is, sinks back down into the water briefly and resurfaces. And even from this distance you can see two waterlogged corpses that seem to have scooped up from the seabed. And the bridge turns around and swims back to the cliff graves. Mm -hmm. um, can we intercept the bridge before it gets back to you the... Are... Will we have time to do that? All the way up here on top of the cliffs on the, uh, yep. near, the near the entrance to the cliff graves and yep. then all the way at the bottom of the cliffs at the sea level. Is where this bridge yep. came from, right down. A simple no would have sufficed, but yeah. Well, no. What a terrible DM I am. Uh, my description <laughs> misled you, and so uh, allow me to clarify. Apologies, I thought we were still on the beach climbing up, but we we've gotten to the top. All right. Um, is there any way of telling where this bridge is headed now that it's coming back? Uh, it has come back and uh, swum into one of the open tunnels at the base of the cliffs at sea level and disappeared. All right, we're gonna have to, we're we're gonna have to fight our way down there, I think. I think the thing that is controlling yeah, all this is, and I'll point to like the center of the everything, like the grave. Everything is in the middle of something. Yeah, actually, I'm a cultist. Can I roll? Can I roll where the big bad would like? Where where is this dude doing the spells from? Uh, like <laughs> the bridge went to the deepest, darkest place, the cliff graves. And All right, we're going down Hell deepest, yeah. darker the cliff graves. <laughs> All right, uh, and I, and I and I like I'm like All right, team, let's go. After you, and I turn to the two like two melee guys. I go after you. <laughs> now we, we while we while we walk, we should have a quick conversation. Um, this uh, child who has the book. Um, are we just going to what? We're not going to. Right. Go Fight? It's no, such... no, smite. Smite, right. No, hang on, the, the the kid hasn't necessarily done anything wrong. I mean, they yes. may be possessed by this book. We need to disarm them, okay. and then... Uh, no, no, the, the child is raising undead. The book is a book. Yes, but the book is the evil thing here. How is the book... Yeah, regardless, the street. child's a, a kid. He he doesn't know what he's doing. He's not I agree. Our mission should be to get the book off the child no matter what. Agreed. But uh, if it, I'll, I'll be real clear. Yeah. You could be, you know, there could be a bit of funny buggers. We're all on the same side here. If anyone kills that child, not only are you not invited to my event on Sunday, but I will personally, you know, attack you and, and, <laughs> okay, and put cool. you out as well. <laughs> so I have a solution. The kid right? is not something, to die. Something to I suggest. Kill child and then bring him back. He's fine. Don't get don't rid of the kill the child. Soul and then we bring Take the book. Take the book. Don't kill the child. The book is a book. I agree. Priority one. Take the book. So, I'll, I'll, it's clear. I, I get you being funny here. I'll kill you <laughs> if you if you kill the child. It's you can take it how you want. I agree. I don't want to be killed by you. I'm taking good, the book. Good. good. We're on the same page. I can, I have a suggestion very quickly. Clearly the book wants to be taken by people who can use it. It tried mm. to get this mage to take mm -hmm. it. It tried mm -hmm. to get this apprentice to ta take it. Yep. Uh, I'm the most brilliant wizard in the world. No, no, can... no, 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 no. Please. This is a sorcerer of business here, wizard, all right? Like I get that you, you blew your load in that fight back there and you were pretty like jazz oh yourself. sorcerer business yeah, oh yeah. i see i yeah, didn't exactly. realize so, that we were you, dealing with you party bookworms tricks. wouldn't understand all right man you, you, <laughs> just... you take off your thumb sorcerer it, no but i i can do spells more than once a day so you go ahead then yeah i will go ahead the army of I undead will. swarms your quibbling and uh you are killed and torn apart <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, while well, this, this is like an avengers conversation while we're blasting undead oh away. of course Plus, in that case yes yeah, set the scene how do you how do you uh, uh make your way to the uh base of the cliff graves i would love to know uh i think montage I, I, style I love the idea that we're arguing while we're like slaying undead feeds left right is that how you do it you're going in guns blazing we're running running out of time so uh yes tell me exactly oh, yeah. how you get to the base yeah of i breaks. think i think guns blazing no one wants to sneak this right nah. no. rock and roll uh, excellent I think, yeah 
Eric is just walking, and if something gets close enough to him, he's just gonna punch it <laughs> <laughs> and then keep going. He's just not uh, even. How is everyone else dispatching their foes? I've got scorching ray up, and I'm just <laughs> cleaning them up as I go. Yeah, outstanding. And who else? I cast teleport shield, so whenever something tries to hit me, it is immediately. Oop, did I did I lag out for a second? Sorry. No. I cast no. teleport shield, so whenever something tries to hit me, it's immediately teleported off a cliff before it can <laughs> land. A strike. Outstanding. Uh, I don't think I ever draw my weapon. These three are more than capable. I'm shepherding. If one of them gets <laughs> off track, I'm like, ah, hey, come up, back together, back together. We're a team here. At work. If if uh, the sorcerer almost lacerates one of our allies, I redirect him a little bit. <laughs> Fantastic. So in very short order, you uh, fight your way through the hordes of undead, find uh, the entrance hidden in one of the mausoleums to uh, descend deeper into the tombs, and fight your way down through these winding, never-ending tunnels uh, of crawling with undead, trying to find your way to the center. And just as you feel like you've finally made it there, uh, you seem to have found the corridor that, uh, that, that uh, is converged upon by all of the other smaller kind of channels. Off to the right, off to a smaller passageway, you think you hear some faint shouting. Mumfled slightly though. Quick, that way. Wait, was that, is it, is it like faint shouting of someone in trouble or faint shouting of someone perhaps doing a spell? Oh, I'm sorry. I've just broken all of your cameras. Give me one second while I bring those back. Oh, oh. no! Actually, I broke my camera as well. So, uh, well, hey, can you tell? It's one, my first time back. streaming. Boys Who knows? The darkness. <laughs> there we are. All right. Uh, the shouting is... Uh... Oh, Someone muffled. It's very muffled, uh, as if through a great distance. I'm easy. Let's go that direction. Okay. Go, 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 go. Shush, 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 shush. All right, you come across a, a small chamber off uh, off from the rest of them with a, uh, a, a stone open. catacomb at no, the uh, at the center, which is where the muffling seems to be coming from. Uh, Eric and I can heave it open. You heave it open. <laughs> with no concern. The lid is slid open and you see the wide... Uh, well, you don't see the wide. You see the butt, the hairy ass of a dwarf. Who has been thrown at the at the uh, in the uh, in the in the what's it called coffin? Not coffin. Uh, yeah, sarcophagus, sarcophagus. Whatever you like. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah With yeah. his hands tied behind yeah. his back, and immediately as soon as the lid is thrown open, his shouts only seem to get stronger. And he goes, "Come on, get 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 me out of there! Don't 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 worry uh, about the binds. I can take you. I can take you. I can take you with both hands behind my back. Come on, just let me see your face." Eric, let's just close this back up. This is a fugitive. He's wanted by the light, I presume. Digger. Up above. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. I searched the dwarf. Wait, you got, you got air in your lungs. Pockets. I'm looking through pockets. Get, 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 get out of there. Get out of there. You, you got anything good on you? Well, no? a heartbeat. Right, yeah, now you can check on my phone. A heartbeat <laughs> and air in my lungs. Seems what like you don't really want to here? turn that away, do you? What? You're right, we could use help where we can get it. Do you know what's happened here? Oh, hi. One of the, uh, the sorcerer's apprentice, he went mad. Stabbed our mistress, he did. Took the book, ran down here. I tried to stop him, I did, but there was no talking to him. He's, he's, he's got red eyes. Red eyes that see no reason. Aye, we gotta, we gotta put a dagger through his heart now. No. What's your mi you said mistress? Hey, Shitana, the chains of the chain tower. You know her? Da, who are you? Digger, her apprentice. And wanted fugitive. Well, that's quite. Wait, the I, I'll, charge. I'll turn to who I currently know as Party Dad, because uh, no one introduced themselves, and just be like, <laughs> eh, "Did you want to put the lids back on?" Well. Even if they are a fugitive, they can possibly help us. We'll Wait. deal with claims later. Look, can I pull out the? Can I pull out the 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 um the ball yeah. and I point to it? it like, you, are you the apprentice that made this? Uh, what is it? Let me take a look. Uh, I I like sharing it. Like, can oh. I can I do an insight check to just tell if he is lying through his teeth? He sure can. I I'm vibing that he is just fibbing. With a wisdom roll, you certainly can. Oh yeah, sorry. I used a, a little bit. Blah, blah. Um, and the background that tells you tells you when people yeah. are lying. Yeah, as a as a refugee, I often had to judge people quickly and by their uh, whether they would take me in or take advantage of Absolutely me. Absolutely, you did have a role. All right. 
Oh, 11. That is not even... 11? Think he's, just, me anything. he's just desperate to get out. There is no doubt about that. He would like you to uh, uh, untie him and get him out of here. Yeah, he's lying. I don't care. I, I turn my back on the whole situation. <laughs> I'm like, I'm ready to go. I, I'm going to like like turn the dwarf around and just look at him and be like, are you lying to us? We've all got pasts we'd rather not discuss. But regardless of who I am and where I've been, the fact is right now we're in terrible danger and we've got to go see my little friend. Can you lead us there? I can. All or, right. Well, or, then... or they could. I'll turn around and three soldiers, face uh, flesh dripping off their faces, have uh, assembled behind you. Their weapons at oh, the dear. ready. At the ready, but not about to stab you. They seem... Uh, as, as far as you can tell, uh, on their undead faces, surprised to see more people here than they were expecting, but they didn't come for a fight. They just uh, stand with their with their halberds at the ready, and they point to all of you. Ah. Take us to your leader. I will Blink. lift That's up the dwarf. Want. I will lift up the dwarf by his like the back of his neck. I've I've got like, fucking what have I got? 18 in strength. I'm just going to hoik the dwarf and like drag him along behind us for the time being. Excellent. Uh, yeah, let's follow them. Let's just, oh, no. <laughs> like, it's go. unusual, but it's effective. All right. Uh, so what's the game plan here? We just get close enough to stab him or we stab him? We're taking the book. The kid is to be unharmed. Well, unharmed. I mean, a bit of bonking's probably all right, but not lethal. All right. Oh, by the I haven't untied the dwarf, by the way, <laughs> in case that matters. I ha like, no one has... If you, yeah. if you change your mind of that, I might be able to get my pockets and find something that could help you. I don't think we're changing our mind. <laughs> oh, it's pretty nice. It's only going to work for me, though, so no sense stealing it. I've been fooled enough by dwarves telling me to reach into their pockets. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a, it's a prank back in Forge. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> I went to a private school. It wasn't fun. Hi, so, something <laughs> like that. You know the uh, the little miniature traps you can get down on Cobbler Street. <laughs> little tiny models. I still have scars on my fingers. Yeah, little tiny models of traps. You, trap him. you throw them at the wall, throw them at the floor, and instantly they're full sized. Now that sounds like something that could help. Duh, I'm keep walking, <laughs> following. Like, yeah, I, 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 I think you're staying shackled, mate. Sorry. Ah, it's a damn shame. I'll get out of here without a look of trust, I can tell you that. All right, do you walk on? I mean, I am I am focusing on carrying. If someone else wants to untie him, sure. But I'm just, like, no. dragging along. Mm. I don't care that much about saving the kid's much. life. All right, so very good. Instead, you walk on. And before long, in short order, you arrive in the deepest, darkest point of the Cliff Graves. Here we are. I'm going to zoom in. And then I'm going to scooch his up a bit just so the uh, viewers can see what's going on. Let me drop the soldiers back. And uh, all right. So uh, Eric is carrying Digger. Is that right? Uh, dragging the... dragging him excellent and he's still bound and uh, the soldiers so the soldiers are forcing you to walk ahead of them of course okay uh, push place yourselves where you will <laughs> if you would like to go if like someone would like to take the lead they can otherwise you can approach I'd like to bit. I'd like to if if, there, if 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 people start talking I would like to meld into the background and potentially hide somewhere in a corner All like right. like sneak if that is the thing that i am able to do it i'll sure try to be is. as far forward as i can for initiative see. triggers i will be slightly behind the party dad but um ahead of the squishies i will be third <laughs> excellent choice Technically, the digger is third because i drag but uh... all right so it looks like i'm here then we are gathered all right what? So you've okay. come, you, you've come into this kind of ancient, uh, pitch black almost cavern, except for a few sputtering candles on the edges of the of your vision, uh, and you come across the scene of a boy. He looks to be about ten years old. 
His eyes have sunken into his skull and his, his skin is pale and uh, unhealthy looking. Standing next to him is a skeleton dressed in the regalia of a cleric uh, with like a circlet on its head. Um, and uh, poking out from its long black robes is a single bony hand resting on the boy's shoulder. In the boy's lap, he's sitting cross-legged on the floor, and in his lap is this enormous black leather-bound book, seemingly dripping with red ink. It seems like it weighs as much as he does, and he's kind of reading it and getting absorbed to it, and every now and then looking down at the floor where there are those two water-legged corpses, water-logged corpses that you saw the, the, the Bridge of Bone pick up out of the ocean. And as you enter, Hathred looks up and says, "Oh." Digger, I'm, I'm so glad you brought some more friends. I was hoping we'd have a big party. Uh, so, Hathred, uh, I can see you've got, you know, you're having a bit of fun. You've gotten messed up in some, some dark magic, which I'll be honest, when I was your age, experimented with a bit as well. I mean, everyone does. Uh, I can see you, you know, you miss your mum and dad and you're thinking that this might bring them back. It will. Uh, I, it will bring them back, Mr. Beers. No, They told see, me, they, they promised me. It's going to be all right. Who, who promised you, mate? My new friends. He looks up at the cleric and he looks back at the soldiers. I just, I think they're bad influences. I don't <laughs> think they're interested in you for your friendship. They want you to do, like, dark rituals and things. No, no, they, they, they came here to help me. And... And, and you and you can't tell me what to do anyway, because you you you're not my dad. Look, mate, I know I'm not, and maybe I should have reached out to you before. But uh, why don't you just pop the book down and come over here, away from the uh, undead cleric? Yep, yeah, I'll do that. As soon as they're back. Okay. I don't believe. Yeah. See, so that's the issue with this one. All right. Just let me read. Uh, it, I just want to read. Uh, I'm going to step forward and try and take the book from him. I am going to, as a quick action, invoke justice. Mm. What does that do for you? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Once per day, you may invoke justice as a quick action. For the rest of the battle, add eight to the damage of your attacks and oh. the attacks of your nearby allies, which I believe oh, is everyone. Hell yeah. That's so, uh, you may add eight eight by the wording i'm assuming it is eight to everyone's miss damage exactly right not just my miss damage and everyone else's attacks correct yeah. um so yes if you miss add eight all right to whatever you um so can i be hidden oh sorry uh, so Eric is playing, is saying a quick prayer. Uh, 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 Horace, not Horace, Hector, is uh, stepping forward to which the cleric raises a rod. Uh, Balthazar is blending into the background and uh, bullying Schmott. May I, before combat effectively breaks out, can I just hold on to hold on to Hector for a second? And uh, I'll speak out uh, looking towards the cleric. And I'll say, um, and, and uh, I, will, I will invoke my Lich King... Um, uh, connection, if you if you would have it, and I have a positive, I have a, a six that I roll for the Lich King. And I'll say, I would. Um, you know, uh, there are far more attractive targets for your magic than a child, a sorcerer, a wizard, a paladin, and a brilliant warrior. Leave the child be, and I guarantee that should you defeat us, you will have one of us to face instead. Is this five or a six? This is six. I, 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 and you, I'm happy to flavor this however you want. I was thinking of doing a like, look, t if I just, I just watched the uh, the um, uh, Justice League Dark when they keep going, take me instead. So I'm, I'm very happy to flavor it as a take me instead All kind right. of situation, if that's the way it needs to be. But in, in my, my objective is to make sure is to get the book away from the child so we don't hurt the child. All right, the uh, cleric wordlessly. With no breath in his in its lungs, uh, seems to tilt its head and look at you with its with its narrow, beady, glowing eyes, and simply nods and leans down toward Hathred and uh, goes to take up the book, to which Hathred holds on tighter and says, "No, no, it's it's mine. You said you said it'd bring him back. You said 
and the cleric pulls slightly uh, more and the book just reach starts to uh, lift out of Hathrood's grip in his lap at which point Digger bursts forward, hands still behind his back and says, Die you little git! Everybody should roll initiative. Oh! Hell yeah! Oh, uh, actually, don't roll initiative yet because I'm going to reset the combat tracker. Oh, sorry. Whoop. I've already rolled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is why I'm hoping for a good roll. That is my fault entirely. Uh, Alright, combat is started. Uh, everybody can roll initiative. What the hell? He's uh, Eric, I'll take your original one. That's totally fine. And Balthazar, I will take your original one if you like. Oh, 13, you can have I that. I think mine was 13. Oh, my, that was I mine. Rolled once. I only rolled once. Oh, excellent. Oh, that must have been from last one. All right, cool. Uh, and let's get some more initiative happening. There's Hathred. There's the cleric. Oof. There is the soldiers. Uh, yeah, Hathred got a uh, natural 20. So, uh, Hathred... Yeah. Is. I have a 21. I don't know if that if the crit overrides me. Uh, well, Hathri got a natural 20 total. for a total 26, um, which cool. is far beyond what you'd expect a, a, a normal 10-year-old kid to get for initiative, but it, something tells you he's no longer a normal 10-year-old kid. So uh, he will uh, stand up. Does he actually have any attacks? I have no idea. Uh, ah, nice. he, he can try to grab that his book That kid's got back. a gun! <laughs> he got, actually, he does. Uh, well, more, more to say, the book does. He stands up, uh, kind of puts puts his hands to uh, his side of his head and screams, No! And a necromantic blast echoes forth from the book and blasts uh, the, the cleric in a stunning turn of events. Rolls a uh, 14 versus PD, which feels like it won't be enough to hit the cleric, but, uh, you know, he made a statement. Uh, yeah, it is not. Um, so, down, good for him. instead... Stand up some kid. Yeah, good on him. Uh, instead, he goes to the soldiers. Uh, he goes to the soldiers, who is up next. Uh, Digger is running forward, so uh, they're going to try to engage him yeah. because they don't like the look of that. Sorry. I was holding. You sure were. Uh, he takes you by surprise. You should have a strength roll, and it's going to be pretty easy to uh, hold him. Uh, have a go. I would like to to argue that as an inquisitor, I had to hold a lot of people back from trying to run sure away did. from me. I attempted to, I don't know, torture them. I think that's what inquisitors. Absolutely, uh -oh. you did. Have a roll. You may have a thirty-two you know, with a I, natural twenty. I, I sure may. <laughs> He is not going anywhere. So instead, the soldiers realize that you are the real, uh, real threat. Oh, I was just hoping they'd attack him anyway because he was the first thing they got to. Oh, <laughs> not at all. No, they realize that you're the one in charge, and uh, oh. they would like more chaos. So instead, all three of them will move to you. Uh, your AC is twenty-two, I believe. No. Um, fantastic. So a fourteen, a twenty-one, and a twenty-three. Uh, so one of them hits you, and on a 16+, plus, they get disengaged, but they did not roll a natural 16+. plus. So Dang. just uh, 13 damage coming your way, yeah? It's not a nat, though, is it? Uh, it was a, a natural 14 for a total okay. of 23. Sorry, I mean uh, a critical. It was not yet. Um, cool. Uh, Bulling Schmott is up next, and at that, Lord Balthazar's dagger grows itchy in his hand. And you remember his very strange instructions not to hit anyone until he stabs someone. Uh, which uh, is probably still going to happen at the bottom of the initiative order. Well, uh, uh, you know, I admire many things about Lord Balthazar, but uh, in this case, I will not be uh, obeying that command. Instead, I will be copying his forked lightning spell, and I will cast my own version of forked lightning, which is called lightning bolt. You see, a very different <laughs> thing, and I will evoke it and max it on those three. It deals forty-eight damage guaranteed because of the forty and the eight that Art provided me. That's on uh, miss. only on misses. Only it, that's on a miss. Yeah. So 48 on a miss. Yeah. Uh, if that will kill them, then we don't even need to check if I hit or not. Wait. <laughs> that's the most arrogant thing. Like, does it, will it just kill them anyway? No, like, I missed well, that. 40, sorcerer. 48 you, on a miss. Listen, talk to your dagger, why don't you? I can give you speak to items if you need it. <laughs> Did you just um, tell me 48 four, <laughs> four on a miss? Four, so so this, the lightning bolt works. I target... Um, oh, sorry. I do have to roll 1d3, which I didn't see. I roll one d three. It might only yeah to see how many targets. How many you target? Well, actually, roll, okay. roll, hit hit the lightning bolt, uh, and that, that'll roll for you. Where's my lightning bolt? Here's my lightning bolt. Ciao. Uh, so two targets. Two. In the group. So okay. who are you targeting? So, oh yeah. I'll Seven take the one closest to me and the one closest to Digger. Uh, the two so the soldiers. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Cool. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, roll their attacks. Actually, if I can choose to, I may as well take the one close to me in the cleric. If, if I can. Oh, it's They're in not a group, in a group. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, okay. I'll take the one close to me over there. And if I miss, I deal, I, I deal 40 damage because I've evoked it. Does evoke deal max damage or double? Evoke max it, maxes it. Does maxes evoke, the roll. They, they seem to deal 20. They, they're 1d20. Right? So it'd be 20. Lightning bolt target three, 1d3 enemies in a group. On a hit, uh, deal 78. Oh, sorry, 78. I did the math wrong. So I, I thought it was... Uh, oh, fuck. I've, I was reading d10s. I was reading the damage for a different spell. Sorry. Uh -huh. There we go. All right, so I, deal, <laughs> I deal, what, 78. 56. So what's... 56. What's 56. That's 56. a shitload, yeah. 56 on a hit. If 56 on a hit. Half of that on a 56 20, 23. 36 on a... Yeah. We'll just find out if... You... Yeah. 28. 28 plus 8, so 36. 36. Oh, yeah. 36. Hit or miss, you'll max out the, the spell's damage dice. There you go. Yep. So, Oops. first one is a hit. Second one is a pit. I presume 23 and 24 against PD. So, it'll deal 56 damage to both of them. Light legs. All right, then. That's fine. Good thing they weren't mooks because uh, two of them are roasted. Nice. Easy. Uh, I think he wanted the other one. Oh, that's fine. That, that, that's fine. Oh, uh, I thought you wanted one close to you. That's, that's fine. That works. That one. That's fine. Easy done. Yeah, easy. Bit of juggling. Fantastic. All right. Uh, two undead soldiers go up in smoke. Uh, it's gross. Uh, an acrid smell fills the air. Do you want anything else, or should we go to Hector? I think you've um, done it. Right. I, yeah, I'm, I, I think that's the end of. Uh, I might move. Go for uh, it. You can longer engage. Put yourself near, anywhere you like nearby. Um. I'll get to here. Excellent. Uh, right. I yell, uh, unhand that child, and I attack the cleric. Excellent choice. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen is not great. I see. use comeback strike once per battle. When you miss, make another attack immediately. I also it was an odd roll, so I increase my crit range. I strike him again. Fifteen. Fifteen Oof. is still not great. I end my turn. Excellent no, choice. Oh yeah, mixed, oh, yeah, mixed damage. Oh yeah, uh, Twelve. Twelve damage. Twelve damage. Thank you so much. All Twelve. Right. Oof. Plus eight. Oh yeah, nice. Twelve. Twelve is the total. Yeah. All right. The cl Who's up? Thank you. Of oh, cleric. The cleric is up next. Okay. Slightly some more. Um, cool. What has it got? Once per battle, it can do that. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. Um, it's got a, a rusted mace. That sounds good. It's got a death spell, which is close quarters, which means it was not will not I provoke were? an opportunity attack. So let's go with a death spell instead. On uh, uh, Hector, of course, who's threatening you. Oh. Uh, Seventeen versus PD. Is that going to do it? Oh yeah, that uh, is exactly it. It does. You're gonna take nine damage now, and you're gonna take five damage at the end of each of your turns. Uh, Eric no, comes. Oh, you've got that right. Thank you. All right, uh, Eric. What can you do? You're gonna have a hard time attacking with a uh, digger at your back. Oh. I believe you are yeah. still holding him tight. Duh. Um. Okay, quick question about how movement through Battlefield works. Yeah. Because Bushing, <laughs> Bulling, Schmott, and Hector are in front of the child and the cleric. Yeah, you can't quite get there. And that goes for anyone? Uh, yeah, I would say they're taking up the uh, the little pulpit there okay. above the that bottomless case, pit. It comes down to all really evil layers. Uh, yes. Digger isn't going to be able to get to the kid, so I don't care. I just let him go. He's got He's chained up anyway. All right. Uh, uh, um, unless I can hold on to him and still attack. Absolutely not. I think it's going to be very tricky. Let him go. The the alternative is I killed Digger. Uh oh. You're cool. Moida. <laughs> Turn around and just be like, stay. And then I'll let <laughs> him go and pull the sword out and I'm just going to smite the skeleton in front of me. Excellent. The, uh, the zombie. Go for it. Yeah. These ones have more flesh on them. That's why they're uh, the vanguard. Oh, that's a critical miss. Ooh. Anything we're worried about I there? Didn't get that. Nope. Anything that activates when you when you critical miss at all? Nope. All right. I believe they have a power. No, it's when they roll when you roll a natural thirteen, unlucky thirteen. 
I'm assuming I've rolled a natural 13 while I was standing next to a soldier. Oh, that's cool. I, 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 uh, I have. I have rolled a 13. A natural oh, no, 13? Not a natural, not a yeah, natural. That's all well, good. regardless, I still get to do my damage and then halve it and then add 8. Oh my goodness, that's gross. Alright, add that up for Plus me. Plus 8's pretty good. Uh, so 38 halved is... Uh, 5, 10, I'm going to do math. 19? Uh, 27. Total with the 19 plus, plus eight. eight is uh, 27, 27 damage. damage. Damn, that's pretty good. Um, on a miss. Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's I mean, not damage bad. is nice. It just makes I you mean, feel like all... you're doing stuff. Yeah. No. I um. Is there anything else? I'm gonna use. Well, I guess I use my my once per battle. I get to do that three more times, by the way, because I've only got <laughs> three times a day. That's so that's good. not bad. Um, Do I want to use my my racial power on this guy, or do I want to try and hit one of the others? I believe your racial power comes in when you hit. Do what your heart tells you. Not when you miss. Yes, correct. In that case, never mind. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Balthazar, what have you got? You have I, managed to slip away in the, I in moved the chaos. To here. All right. Uh, uh, do I get any advantage for being hidden or not? Uh, I don't think so. You didn't really roll to actually hide. You just kind um, of right. hoped that no one would notice yeah. you. Uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some uh, lightning damage to the undead cleric. Have a go. Bit of razzle dazzle. Oh, and as uh, so that's 19 against his PD. That's a hit. Uh, and that will be 33 lightning damage. Oh Oof. my goodness! And are we Is worried there about on the odd versus even roll? No, I rolled an 11 because so it's odd, so it doesn't chain to anyone okay. else. Um. And as as Hector has yelled out, drop the kid, I yell out, drop the book <laughs> <laughs> as I as I charge out. Alright, I'm done. Excellent. Uh what was the damage, sorry? Uh 33, I believe. 33 on the cleric. Lightning damage specifically, if that matters. Jesus. Alright, how does it die? You blast the pieces. Oh, uh, it's goggles. a it's a lightning bolt. It shoots out from my fingers and and, and collides into his thing. And as he zaps, he, he he steps back and drops what he's holding, and then falls off the, the bottom of his head. He sure it. does. That's what it's there for, after all. All Absolutely. right. So at the uh, top of the round, <laughs> Hathred, ha uh, sorry, Digger has burst free of uh, Eric's grasp and has charged. Now that there is room to stand there, uh, he bursts past the wizard and the fighter and dives for the book trying to uh, wrest it from Hathred's now loose grip who's looking up opportunity attacks because absolutely on the same side. absolutely you do and uh, he doesn't care he's running for it kill him kill him uh David and, and Jim you both have opportunity attacks uh he's saying we haven't he's we saying... All... no I thought it was just oh no sorry just... my bad, Eric, my bad. Yeah. okay so uh, Eric can have a basic roll you cannot smite your evil yeah, on uh, opportunity attacks Ooh, 22 oh, AC, that feels good. That's like pretty a good. hit. His AC is uh, oh, 20. Ooh. It's a good chance. 18, and can I use my racial power here? Yes, absolutely, you can. Wonderful. I don't like this guy. I'm going to use Cruel. Ooh. Excellent. He's going to take some heard, ongoing damage. Once per battle. Oh, it's once a battle. When you hit a foe, deal 20 ongoing damage to that enemy save ends. So I don't know if it happens immediately okay. or on his turn. Uh, at the end one. of his turn. Lovely, he's going to take 20 damage. That's gross. Jeez. That's fucking heaps. Um, he so he takes... he's, he's not going to survive much past that. So as he dives the book, there is kind of a contest. Oh, and it's on his turn. Jeez. It is his turn right now, yeah. Uh, there's a contest of strength. Um, Hathred has weirdly the supernatural strength beyond the 10-year-old boy. Digger has less strength because he was just tied up and malnourished and just been stabbed as he ran away. So I think it's a, a straight kind of even roll. Uh, if it's an even roll, uh, Hathred is going to get keep the book. If it's an odd roll, Digger's going to take it. It's an odd roll. Digger's going to take the book. Even with Hathred's mighty strength, the shock of his friend uh, being blasted to pieces by a lightning bolt and falling down the uh, chasm is enough to shock him to let go of the book. Digger wrests it from his hand and begins laughing maniacally until the ink starts to flow off the pages. <gasps> the ink flows off the pages and onto his hands. He looks down, confused, and says, What's going on? Get it off me. I can't let go. I just wanted to sell the damn thing. The ink goes further, Silly covering guess. his entire body, and eventually turning from a bright red, a bright crimson of blood, starts to darken and harden and blacken. And in a moment, he is covered in an entire carapace 
of black armor. This is the necromancer of the spellbook given form. Uh, Wait, the uh, necromancer, the necromancer? Uh, I think still... of the Lich King, the villain of the Avengers. The Lich King. Just okay, this the is just necromancer. Okay. Yeah, does he still take that 20 ongoing damage? Oh, he sure does. Brilliant. Uh, he's going to make a saving throw to try to ignore it. Uh, he's absolutely going to no. fail that, so he's going to take another 20 damage next turn as well. Uh, and I should mention, <laughs> the Necromancer starts on half health if he managed to convince Hathred to give himself up, but he has not. He has done no such thing, so Hathred uh, staggers away, screams in terror, as he kind of, the book is torn from his grip, he regains some of his senses. Uh, he's not going to attack anyone, he's going to spend his turn shivering on the ground, and indeed falls on the body of his parents, who uh, the one head are currently standing on. <laughs> that was cheeky. Alright, what do you do? Who's up? Who's up? Oh. Uh, top of the round. Excellent question. I believe someone has. Oh, it's the soldiers. Hey. Uh, someone's going to have a stab on Eric because he can. With an 11 AC, it's not going to happen. Bowling schmutz. <laughs> All right, um, I will uh, move over to here and stand out of the way of Hathred and go, you know, you know um, come on, come on, come on. And what I'm trying to do here is, this is what I would do if it was, I don't know how the opportunity attacks work. If it was d and I'd step out to provoke an opportunity attack to make them spend their opportunity attack ability and then clear the way for Hathred. Say that is again, that something? Oh, I lost that. So I would step away from the necromancer. Yep. I think it's, I think there's no limit on the there's no limit on opportunity attacks that can be taken? Okay, no, that's mind. correct. All right, in which case I will... Um... Do that anyway? Hmm, yeah, I will I will move out anyway. Just I... to clear the way. I will take an opportunity attack. I would love to give you one. There it is, Bone Claws. Um, just the one. Uh, 14 versus AC. 14 versus AC will not hit. Excellent, as you were. All right, and I will cast Acid Arrow. Ooh. -ding. Roll that up. Ooh, 11 versus PD. Have you got any uh, icon relationship points left by any chance? Nope, nope, I'm all out. You're all out, then I'd call that a miss. All um, right, just that's okay. Just five acid damage. Oh, and you get the spell back next turn. Oh, no, next rest. That's next rest, lame. Rest, yes. Yeah. Why, oh, well, why have you um, got that for the long shot? Oh, the next short rest. So should have used that earlier. Oh well. Uh, five ongoing acid damage is it is on top of the uh, bleeding cruel damage from Dark Elf. Uh, he's not going to last much longer. And do Hector. I take an extra eight because of the miss condition applied by the Paladin? Yep. Uh, not, I doubt on going. No, that's on going. That's not dealing damage. Although maybe. I don't know. Oh, no, it's totally I, I, unclear, but I'll give it to you. Eight damage coming his way. All right. Perfect. Uh, Hector. Taste blade. I attack him. Uh, 12 versus AC is not enough to hit, but a 21, okay. thanks to the escalation die, is, oh, uh, I kid you not, die. it saved you twice now. Awesome. 26 uh, damage is a fantastic smite. He is uh, staggered, which means down below half hit points. Uh, anything else you'd like to add on to that? That's me. That's you. Uh, the cleric is no more. We go to Eric. Eric the cleric. We have one soldier uh, still remaining. <laughs> How bad does the soldier look? Uh, not. You could probably knock him over with a stiff breeze. Then I ignore it. Um, I say, someone deal with the soldier, and I'm gonna just walk like up to the necromancer. Have an opportunity attack on you with a 16. It's probably not gonna do much. Um. Yes. Um. Smite. Go, smite away. Yeah. Take it off before I do it. Fifteen is simply not enough, nor is sixteen. This thing is tough. Digger is can kind I of you, uh, can I can I actually no. You still gonna can do I half write damage? What I was going to do. Go for it. Uh ignore that. I would like to call the chains. <gasps> uh... Yes, of course. Let me dig up the rules. Uh, while you tell us what was the magic word that Shuthana whispered in your ear to say, call the chains and they will come. 
As I have explained before in my natural tongue, it is not something that is pronounceable in the tongues of men and dwarves and whatever the, the little one is. I think like half halflings is what you call them? I don't know. So it is just very simply chains. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. You feel through the ground the uh, tremors as the enormous uh, metal chain that was wrapped around the chain tower it seems to unswirl and unswirl, flying through the air, flying over the Cliff Graves complex, down the side of the cliff, into the caverns, uh, going straight for uh, the necromancer. Is it going for the necromancer or the book? You can will it. He's going, He's going for the book. Excellent. Uh, and you have an attack roll with your highest ability score. Uh, that would be my strength. Add a strength roll. Okay. 21. 21 with an AC of 20. Uh, with an AC of 21, it's actually 22 with the Escalation die. That is most resoundingly a hit. Mm -hmm. The metal chains fly into the room and start to wrap around uh, the Necromancer, dealing 4d10 damage. Would you care to roll that up? Uh, you can hit those d10s in the, just below the chat bar there. Hit that four times and they'll roll it for you. Ooh, 23. Fine, something. Oh, it's not goes. quite enough to kill it, but it is wrapped steadily in chains. And if its HP drops to zero, then it will be whisked away back to the stone tower. So Balthazar, what can you do? Oh, we can. I can attack it. <laughs> is that Enjoy. gonna work? Hey, uh, just classic. you know what? I'm gonna it's just crazy enough. I'm gonna activate. It it, uh, I'm gonna activate it, uh, my spell frenzy to give me advantage to give me an extra dice to roll. Oh yes, you should have done I'm that. Roll. Uh, only, only plus one. I can only do it at plus one. Oh um, right, combat roll. That's cool. Uh, I am frenzying, so I get another attack. And uh, it's a crit. crit. Way. So nice. that'll deal uh, twenty-two fire damage, and it was an even hit, so it gives two d4 ongoing fire damage. Turn into paste. I kid you not, with uh, 22, it gets down to one hit point. Oh, fucking God. And then on the uh, very next round, it is its turn. And it's got like three different sources of save of, of ongoing damage right now, I believe. It's bleeding from the cruel <laughs> strike. Uh, it's just been burnt by the scorching ray, and there's something else going on. Uh, acid. The acid is still melting Perfect from the bolt. acid. And so I think it's dead. <laughs> it was the efforts of all of you. It's kind of the armor is being torn apart. Uh, it's being ripped off Digger. He's screaming as it is pulled from his uh, from his form, uh, and the armor is kind of crushed back in by the chains, crushed into a small ball. The black armor turns red once more. It softens. It turns to uh, crimson ink, which flows back into the book. The book is encased in the chains, and then as soon as the as as quickly as the chains arrived, they whip back out out of the room, back up the cliff graves across the fields, and once again, uh, with the chains having been so craftily repaired by the wizard by Bullingschmott, uh, it comes to rest. The book comes to rest once again. The dragon bone uh, lectern cased in the chains. May I do a, a, a final thing, since it sounds like the, the combat is ending? Absolutely, you may. Um, after having cast my acid arrow, I spin around and realize I am entirely out of spells. The wizard's uh, worst nightmare. And all my confidence leaves, and I fling myself at Lord Balthazar's feet, and I say, protect me, sorcerer, please, please, I beg of you. I need your help. I, I, I mean... <clears throat> And hurry up once I realize we've won the fight. And, 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 and uh, well, I, I guess you are rather uh, mighty, I suppose. <laughs> All is right. It for uh, for me to dispatch of final skeleton. Uh, absolutely, yeah, that is uh, done in short order. Uh, all right, and his silence settles back down in the middle of the complex cliff grave, uh, the, co the complex of the cliff graves. Uh, the only sound to uh, break the air is gentle sobbing, as you see a small frightened child kneeling over the corpses of his parents, with no I one have left a in the thing world. I would like to do. What? I'm not nice elf, but occasionally do good things. Because priestess, I suppose. I would like to walk up and use final lay on hands on child and invoke 
my uh, my advantage ah. of the Crusader because I don't know this is how this is gonna work. Um, and essentially, I would like to. I know what it is. I have been in a situation. Uh, as a acolyte of the Crusader where I have done horrible things and I've seen horrible things and yet I came to the light of the priestess and have, have now like cleansed myself and I'm, I'm a better person and I would like to impart that through lay on hands into this child so that his mind and his soul may be repaired and he may go through this life with the happy memory of his parents but without the pain and anguish of a recent loss. That's beautiful. And it works flawlessly with the experience of uh, adventuring uh, flowing into him. Uh, yes, maybe he's, maybe he won't become a sorcerer's apprentice. Maybe maybe he'll turn to the life of the paladin. But either way, his uh, soul is healed and he can look back to the sunlight once again. Thank you all. I kept you a little bit over time than we expected, <laughs> but uh, I hope that was worth it. That was awesome. Uh, thank you very much. It was, um, Excellent. Thank you, one and all. Uh, we were playing um, 13th Age, which is a uh, variant on the kind of classic fantasy D20 rules by Rob Heinzo and Jonathan Tweet, published by Pelgrane Press. We were playing on Astral Virtual Tabletop, which is a really fantastic, easy-to-use system for running virtual games. We've been listening to the sweet sounds of Sirenscape, uh, which is uh, a cool little app to uh, spice up your game with music. Um, and uh, what else? We were playing Swords Against the Dead. Swords Against the Dead, which is a one-shot adventure by Gareth Ryder Hanrahan for free RPG Day 2016. Um, thank you, Alan. Thank you, uh, Daniel. <laughs> Alphabetical order. Thank you, David. <laughs> thank you, Jamie. I'm not getting anything back. That's okay. Thank you, Jackson. <laughs> thank you, Jackson. No, thank you, oh, thank you, I, thought, I was waiting to the end. Yeah, thank you, Jackson. Yeah, oh, I'm try and okay. Pile in before right. you finish. There we go. Yeah, no, sorry, what's. We're too used to the way Jamie does it. I know. I wanted. <laughs> like, I wanted you. To... I thought you'd forgotten my name for a period for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember the order. The alphabet is hard. No, I was. Look, I was fishing for four different thank yous. Then that was the. Uh, that oh, was no. my secret. Thank you very much, Jackson. It's always. A, it's always a ton of fun. Excellent. I am so glad. Uh, if if you are watching, thanks you for watching. That's always nice. Um, and uh, I might try to do this again sometime. I don't know. I'll hang out and chat for a bit. Uh, if you found okay. us, and let me know how you found us, and um, see if you want to <laughs> see more. But I will let these fine players get know. Uh, go. Thank you one and all. Have a good one. See everybody. Bye. <laughs>